beautiful Gulf Coast of Florida. And as the weather heats up down here, so do the games as the Red Sox roll into Sarasota. And we remember what happened the last time the Orioles and Red Sox met. This is Ed Smith Stadium in Sarasota, Florida, and it's the Red Sox and the Orioles for the second time this spring. The Red Sox having won the opener in the spring games 5-4, game number two. Hi, everybody. I'm Gary Thorne, and welcome another beautiful day here in Sarasota. The warm weather has continued in Baltimore. The Orioles hope it'll be there for their opening day, but for now, it's getting through the second half of spring training, and it's another team from the East. No question, the Orioles have got to improve their record against the Eastern Division teams. Look at last year. The the Orioles records against each of the teams. The Orioles outscored by each of those teams in the East. And on the season, on the right-hand side, that's the percentage of innings pitched by the starting pitchers for the entire year for each of those teams. And at the bottom, you see the Orioles at just the 61% mark. Jim Palmer, that's what has to improve again for the Orioles to compete in this tough Eastern Division. Well, you're right, Gary, and it doesn't get easy because if we look back at that graph, three of those five teams are in the top five in offense. Uh, the Red Sox, who will play today, 875 runs. The only team that actually played well against them last year were the Rays. Uh, they were 12-6, and six, their team ERA under three runs a game. We know that's what you need to do, and I guess the, the irony is both the Red Sox and the Orioles had records of seven wins and 20 losses. That's how the Red Sox folded in September. Their team ERA almost six runs a game. The Orioles did it in July. Their ERA over six runs a game. Plenty of guys here, candidates. Uh, guys are throwing the balls. We saw Hunter in the B game. He was terrific. Maddox was good. Jason Hamels comes over in the trades. And today we're getting to see uh, Dana Evelyn, who's a left-handed pitcher. Uh, if he uses his changeup, he can always be tough. And Evelyn is one of those fighting for a spot in that rotation. Buck Showalter saying to us today what he really likes. This spring, there's competition for those roles. The last time these two teams met regular season, we all remember that final day of the regular season 2011, that hit by Robert Andino driving in the game-winning run. And while they waited in Tampa Bay to see if they could come back and make it to the postseason, Red Sox Nation knew right then it was all over. The Red Sox would not go to postseason. The reason, a win by the Orioles. Oh, 
Royals Baseball on Masson is brought to you by Sarasota. Go beyond the stadium. Visit Sarasota on Florida's Gulf Coast at number1beach.com. Some overcast clouds, which actually will hold the heat down with me so bad here today. Almost as warm in Baltimore. Full House will be on hand for this game against the Red Sox, who are 4-2 and two so far in spring trading. Here's the starting lineup for Bobby Valentine's team. Nate Spears at third base, Pedroia, Ellsbury, Ortiz, Sweeney, Avilas, Ross, all regulars. Kelly Shopik's going to be doing the catching, probably the backup catcher for them. And Lars Anderson, who's getting a look-see in both the outfield and at first base, David Ortiz. Slow start last year, but it sure wasn't a slow finish. And on the mound. Well, let's uh, take a look at our scouting report. Bird line, land of opportunity. Again, 29 pitchers, a lot of them starters. Uh, Dana, one of them, last year AAA for the Dodgers, came up, won three games uh, late in the season. So he said, uh, it takes me a while to get going. Well, you better hurry because there's a lot of guys to choose from, and then there are five left-handers in this lineup. Let's see how he gets the lefties out. And Nate Spears will lead it off. He's two for six in the spring so far. Shows bunt down to third. Reynolds underhand makes the throw off the bag and a skip away. Hauled in by Andino, who backed it up. Probably a base hit, and we'll tell you right away, talking to the Red Sox players, broadcasters, coaches, this is what Bobby Valentine's doing. This Red Sox team is no longer sitting back waiting for the two or three run homer. Yeah, you got a speedster like Nate Spears who actually played for the Orioles uh, when he first started. He can bunt. He does. He makes uh, Reynolds have to make a perfect throw. He doesn't. And all of a sudden you got yourself a base runner. Valentine's doing a lot of that. Everything from uh, bunting to stealing home uh, the spring training. There's Dustin Pedroia. Pedroia started out with a three for nine and Dana Evelyn will be tested right away in trying to hold the runner. Pedroia's numbers from last year magnificent. Evelyn's got to keep an eye on Spears who will take off and already has a pretty good lead over there with Chris Davis holding the bag on him. See what Pedroia does here. Obviously Pedroia one of the best uh, hit and run men in the game. Well he can hit home runs. He can hit for a high average and of course that's uh, as you mentioned a very special player. He can hit the ball into right field with the best of them. 13 stolen bases last season at Pawtucket for Spears who's on at first base and you see him edging off. He's challenging Dana Evelyn the 28 year old left hander to make a throw over there. Pedroia tried to come in on him and that's going to miss up high and will fall behind on the count to an 0. Yeah the problem uh, for Dana is that you have such a good hitter he can handle the bat if you get the ball up uh, becomes a home run hitter. We saw him do that he had 21 of them last year. Wind, what, blowing to Actually right? blowing in a little bit. We don't see that very often here. It's kind of in or out to right field. And there he goes to right. He's got the base hit. Jay Miller up with it. Spears will stop at second base. And the first two are on for the Red Sox. Well, that's Pedroia to a key as we look at the uh, the defense for the oh, Orioles. Betterman to Jones and uh, Jay Miller, Reynolds, Hardy, and Dino, Chris Davis. He won the game yesterday as he hit the first home run, the only home run for the Orioles this year, and then Matt Weeders, Gold Glover behind the plate. Weeders, one of the Orioles uh, who was renewed contract wise on Saturday, late Saturday, the announcement made. No announcement as to whether or not negotiations with Mr. Boris resulted in an increase in pay for him as next season Weeders will be available for arbitration. Ellsbury will pop that one up third base side. High sky, a lot of glare here. Reynolds is over. He'll put it away. The infield fly rule was in effect. Spears will stay at second base and Pedroia will stay at first. The other players that the Orioles renewed their contracts on Ryan Adams, Jake Arietta, Josh Bell, Jason Birkin, Zach Britton, Chris Davis, Oliver Drake, Ryan Flaherty, Tommy Hunter, Joe Mahoney, Troy Patton, Zach Phillips, Nolan Rymode, Alfredo Simone, Pedro Stroop and Taylor Teagarden and Chris Tillman. Those players were all renewed contracts on Saturday and Matt Wieters was in that group. Here is David Ortiz. He started it out with a long ball two home runs and on the spring three hits and nine at bats. Yeah look very lean when we talk about David Ortiz and maybe that's because uh, not only does he have a bat he is carrying a first base glove. Much to his 
<laughs> you fill in the blank. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I think publicly he's uh, he's on board, but he said, "Oh, we've tried that in the past." And I said, "Well, do you, did did you even own a glove?" And he said, "I said, how old your son?" He said, seven. I said, "Oh, so you're using his glove?" And he goes, "That's probably about it." But it does make sense because they will play interleague and they will go to places where you might want Gonzalez, who's not playing today, and left and Ortiz. In at first base, foul back. Lars Anderson is starting at first. He's getting a look in both the infield and outfield, but Anderson is expected to start at Triple A. And Bobby Valentine, of course, who is managing this team, he makes a really good point because you saw it with the Mets uh, when Doc Gooden used to pitch in the Mets back in the mid '80s. Davey Johnson, who's now managing the Nationals, managing the Mets, would put Howard Johnson at shortstop because Doc was a fly ball pitcher. The next day, Kevin Elster. Would play shortstop if uh, yes. Ron Darling, because it was a ground ball guy. Oh, great pitch! Yep. Came inside and down on him. So we talked about uh, to the left, five lefties. The Spears gets on the left-hander by the bunt, and then 0 uh, and 2. What do you do? 0 and 2 takes a little bit off, a little bit of breaking ball under the strike zone, perfectly thrown. And here's another one of the lefties. Sweeney, who's joining the Red Sox, and will get certainly get some work in the outfield. As Carl Crawford is not going to be ready for opening day, and they're not sure when he'll be back. He'll be the starting left fielder when he returns. But until then, Bobby Valentine's going to have to juggle some outfielders, and Sweeney is going to be part of that group. Now, Sweeney against left handers last year hit only 159, 286 off righties. He had only 44 at bats against left handers, so very likely when he's used, it will be in a platoon situation. Evelyn's pitch is going to be on the inside corner for a strike, and it's one on one. Yeah, he again. They had a multitude of outfielders in Oakland last year. He had come off two years where he almost hit 300, 293, 294, and on a normal year, and last year, as you mentioned, not one of those. He hangs in against lefties. A slap hitter, line drive hitter. He's a big guy. And for Evelyn, the Red, yeah, for the Red Sox, excuse me, no. what he brings to the, the the table, whether they're on the road as they are today, but especially at uh, Fenway Park, is he's a great defender. And there's a lot of room in right field in Fenway Park. He'll get to play a good deal of that. Runner at second, Spears, Pedroia at first, two down, two one. Back to the mound, it goes off. Evelyn's going to be in the center field, a base hit. Spears will score. And a tough break for Danny Evelyn. Had he been able to handle that, he could have retired the side instead of an RBI for Sweeney. His first hit of the spring, he'd been 0 for 8. Yeah, pretty firm ground ball, but normally you catch this ball. Take a look right here, right to the glove. Just reach up, can't get it. Again, uh, the infield pretty fast here in Sarasota. So instead of catching again, getting your glove, putting it on the bench, letting your guys come to the plate. And have, the Red Sox have a chance uh, with Avila's coming up to, to add more. And Avila's. He'll be starting at shortstop for the Red Sox this season. He's five for 13 this spring. Takes the pitch inside for a ball. Evelyn at the age of 28. Last season spent most of it with Triple A Albuquerque, 12 and 8, 4.38 ERA. He had 25 starts at Triple A, and it came up late in the season with Los Angeles for the Dodgers and appeared in five games. That'll go to short. Hardy's going to go to first. And we'll get the out. So a run in on three hits. They all started out with an eight Spears bunt to initiate the inning. We'll take a look at the Orioles lineup when we come back to Sarasota.
Red Sox get on the board early. The Orioles coming up as a team hitting 225 so far this spring. It'll be Andino, Hardy, and Jones, Weeders, Reynolds, and Benjamin, Davis, Miller, and Adams. Mark Reynolds last year with the big home run RBI number. And our scouting report on John Lester, not a mission. Uh, he was one of the guys that uh, helped the collapse 7 and 20 record for the Red Sox. Bird beater 14 and 0. Has never, never lost against the, the Orioles. And keep it simple, Kelly Shopik, one of the first things he uh, they asked him, how come you pitched so well when you were catching down in Tampa? He said, fastball command. And we'll see if Lester does that. Lester 14 and 0 lifetime against the Orioles. They have never been able to catch up to him in a tremendous season. Last year for the 28 year old left hander. And uh, Robert Andino will take the pitch away. Andino's 3 for 11 so far this spring. The Orioles last year saw a lot of left handers during the course of the year, and Andino put up a good number against them, hitting 306 against Southpaws. Robert Andino right now penciled in to be the starter at second base. Brian Roberts continues to be. To move on his comeback. He took batting practice for the first time with the team today. And he took ground balls with the team for the first time today. So they've had, as Buck Showalter said, some successive days where things have been just right for Brian Roberts. So the hope is he will uh, be able to make the comeback. They certainly don't think it would be for opening day, even if he does. And Andino's on with a walk. Take a look at the Red Sox defense, and of course we know there is nothing for the base that you can defense the base on balls. Ross Ellsbury, who won a Gold Glove, Sweeney and Wright, Spears, Adilas, Pedroia, another Gold Glover, Lars Anderson, and then Kelly Chapman. Had the uh, big couple of games in the postseason for the Tampa Bay Rays. Here is J.J. Hardy, the Orioles' hard-hitting shortstop, who's two for seven so far this spring. And Dino with good speed. Lester with a real good move over there towards first base. Chopik will be the backup catcher, at least at this point, with Salty, um, Salta Lamacchia scheduled to be the uh, starting catcher. Although there's some question that there may be a real battle for this backup spot. Lavarnier's the so called number three catcher, but they love his bat. Yeah we, yeah, we saw that in September with a couple of home runs. Yeah. A big, strong guy that hit, what, over 30 down at AAA Pawtucket, or a combined double A AA and triple A. So he's trying to learn how to catch. Yeah. He's got the offense. A look over for the signs from DeMarlo Hale at third base. And Dino still looking over there, getting his lead. Hardy with a one ball, one strike count. Runner not going. That'll be lifted up in the air. Cody Ross puts it away. A lot of changes. And starting with the manager, of course, for the Red Sox and the GM gone. JD Drew, Laurie, Papelbon, the closer gone. Reddick gone. Scooter the shortstop. Barry Francona, Veritech retires. Wheeler gone. Wakefield retired. Now Wyland gone. There are substantial names there. Yeah, now of course it's not like they let uh, Jonathan Papelbon go over to the Phillies and then pick up somebody. They, they got a, a young pitcher, Andrew Bailey. We've seen him the last three years with the Oakland. Who now they call him in the Boston Globe a downgrade. I'm not really sure. Maybe that's just a compliment to Papelbon, but he's a pretty accomplished young reliever if he stays healthy. And they really have three closers right now that could be on this team. So it's not as though they're going to have to look around. Bailey is the one who's going to be the closer to start, but. Bobby Valentine is going to have some choices as far as his setup people are concerned, and that's got to be nice. Well, Daniel Bardu at 34 holes is going to be a starter, at least the starting. Out. Runner goes. His shopping throw, and Pedroia didn't get him. Safe call had already been made. Yeah, and Manny Gonzalez, uh, so he was going to be in with it. had the ball or not. Yeah, sometimes you get a little bit lucky. And, and right here, big jump. Of course, he's going on his first move. The throw tails in. If he holds on, maybe gets him in the rear end. See the throw? He reaches. I don't know if he tagged him anyway, but the ball comes out of the glove. So they saw one of the many things that Andino can do and showed uh, Buck Showalter he can steal some bases when given the opportunity. 13 out of 16 last year. For Andino in stolen bases. And now Jones gets a chance for the RBI. Adam will take the pitch away for a ball. 
The Orioles center fielder, a couple of hits in eight at bats so far this year. He will be looking to improve a 242 batting average that he had against left handers. And only four homers off lefties, 21 off righties last year for Adam Jones. Yeah, he just also wants to hit better on the road. What, uh, 19 of his 25 home runs at Camden Yards? Only six on the road, so. But again, just the ability to steal a base, and it's only spring training, and yeah, it doesn't count, but when you put pressure on the pitcher, which is what the stolen base does, John Lester now has a chance of giving up the tying run easily. And with Adam up there, maybe the go ahead run. And Jones, the good eye, Lester works him away, does not get the call. The count goes to 3 and 0 oh, with Matt Weeders waiting on deck. The Orioles, with that stolen base, now have seven stolen bases. As a team, they have uh, surrendered just a couple. 3 0 count. See if Jones has a green light here. Outfield deep straight away. He will take it for a strike at the knees. Lester not giving in on that. Is well, he located. He, yeah, he's got. I mean, he's got four above average pitches. He, you know, he can throw 91 to 96. He's got a two seamer, four seamer, cutter, curveball, and a good changeup. Sometimes, and I think this is what Kelly Shoppett's point was, he tries to use all of them to every hitter. Don't need to do that. 3 1 delivery, and that is there. He fooled Jones on that pitch. Lester in the last four years 15, 19, 15, and 16 wins. Yeah, just a fastball away, and maybe Adam looking for something on the inside, that cutter. And also, when he's 14 and 0, it's not like he's just done it with, with them scoring runs. He's got a 236 ERA, so he's pitched really well at those games. Three ball, two strike count, and Dino off second base goes to right. That's going to be a base hit in RBI. There's Anderson Dolford, couldn't get it. Sweeney up, there's that arm, throw to second, and got him. Yeah, might have got him in the head, too, with the tag. Uh, for Adam, it's an RBI base hit and then thrown out, attempting to turn it into a double. Which is the play to try to make. And again, we told you about Ryan Sweeney. You lose J.D. Drew. Again, somewhat of a disappointment, but a very good defensive outfielder right here going with a pitch. That's the way you try to hit Lester. And so the ball gets by the first baseman, and here's Andino to tie it up. And then Sweeney comes in, perfect throw to throw out Jones at second. That's what he'll give you in the outfield. Second RBI for Adam Jones on the spring, and the Orioles tie the ball game up. Sweeney with a live arm, boy, that was all the way from foul from the foul line in right field. Well, think about it. If if you're left-handed, you have a little bit of an advantage because you don't have to turn completely around. But he had to go a long way to get that ball. He was out in right center field. So Matt Wieters with the bases empty will go for the long ball, puts it up in the air, shortstop. Avilas with the wind blowing in, it'll bring it back a little bit. And that will retire the side. The Orioles will get on the board. They get a run on a hit. Nobody left on. Stolen by space by Andino. Helps out.
crowd on this beautiful uh, summer like day here in Sarasota. Red Sox and Orioles tied at 1 1. Wayne Kirby, first base coach for the Orioles, joining us from the dugout. Coach. Hey, what's going on? How are you, fella? Hey. We were talking about Brian Roberts uh, just a moment ago. You've had a chance to watch him in um, the times that he's been out, take some BP, work some infield. Uh, what's it look like? I mean, he's going in the right direction. Everything is positive with Brian. Um, he's out here every day. He's working. Um, less headaches, and everything's good. How you feel? I'm feeling good, like every day. Yeah, okay. <laughs> no, no. Never changes, does it? So let me add, you know, I, I had to come up here and get prepared for this uh, this uh, exhibition game here. Did you have it? Were you on the backfield uh, this morning? I thought you had to early. Did, oh, yeah. Did you see Dylan Bundy? Uh, um, no, I didn't see Bill, Dylan. Um, I saw him in Boston the first game we went over there. And, did, could uh, you hear the ball popping? Uh, he was throwing pretty hard. <laughs> Very impressive. And he's got an attitude, doesn't he? Uh, that killer attitude. That's yeah. what you need. He does have that. It's on display all the time. You know, I saw him throw about two weeks ago, and I'm just a, a, a side, a bullpen, and I'm saying, wait a minute, that's a little Nolan Ryan here. Very compact, very strong in the legs, 95, 97. Has a good idea of where the ball's going, and he's only 19. Only 19. Cody hey. Ross to the plate, newly acquired for the Red Sox. Wayne, uh, just a question about it. I know you work with the outfielders, and I was reading some, and I, in my eyes, I don't always listen to all these statistics, but somebody was saying that, you know, our outfield, talking about Marquecas, who won a gold glove, Jones, who won one a couple of years ago, and whoever played left field had the worst zone rating, and I'm thinking, wait a minute, how did they ever come up with that number? Um, i got to think, we have a pretty good outfield that could go get them, and they throw well. Your read on what's going on in our outfield. <laughs> well... Uh, yeah, yeah. I heard a lot about that zone rating, and um, you know, zone rating could be pretty different when you got a, you know, like if you put Tampa Bay, they got five good starters, they hit the spots a lot, and it all depends on the pitcher. The pitcher hitting the spot, zone rating be better for us. You know, it's just one of those things. How much positioning during the game do you do with the outfielders, Wayne? A whole lot. Yeah. You know, it's all, again, it, it, it depends on the pitcher. If the pitcher got his good stuff, we can play him the way we're supposed to. If they off on their on fastball and throwing a lot of off-speed, we got to change. So it's in-game adjustments. Yeah, I, I think, you know, we have so many young pitchers here. but uh, And, of course, I was pretty wild when I came up. But when you get a little more experience, can't you play him one way and pitch him that way? It makes it a lot easier. Yeah, it makes it a lot easier. But, you know, this is a tough game. We had a young pitching staff last year. And to their credit, they, they worked through the battles. They did, uh, gave it 100%, and some things didn't work out in the other direction. But, um, you know, the, that's the way the game that's the way the game is being played. How much do you expect the, the Orioles to be running, uh, hit and run, bunting, that sort of thing this year? Well, I mean, it's, it's hard to say. We're going to take what the opposing team gives us. You know, if, if, if they're going to, uh, you know, go to home plate over 1-4, one 1-5, one we're going to try to steal it back. They keep us close, we're going to play close. We don't want to just give them out. We're just going to play the game the right way. Base hit picked up by Cody Ross. Here's Kelly Shopping doing the catching. Two for six in the spring. And we'll chop that one foul outside of third base. Wayne, all coaches have to go uh, research for every game and every series the opposing team. When you do that as a first base coach, what are you looking for? Well, well, first of all, we get the scouting report um, probably the day before the game. Uh, we actually play the series, and uh, as a team, we'll go over the scouting report. But again, we got 12 different pitchers. Four, we got five starters, so we can't play everyone the same way. We'll go over that scouting report for that particular day, and uh, the next two or three days. Um, I will give them a scouting report on on them again, so they get a scouting report every day from me. Yeah, that, hence the uh, when you looked at Andino stealing a base, Lester, you know, the Orioles have never beaten him. Low ERA. You try to push the envelope when you get a guy like him on the mound. Well, you you have to. I mean, we all know what Lester's capable of, but if we can push the envelope and and we're reading something that that he don't feel comfortable with, we will take it. <laughs> Wayne, a lot of fans, we use the numbers of how long you used 1.4, you just said a minute ago. Will you talk a bit and explain what are good, what are average, what are bad numbers as far as pitchers coming to the plate are concerned? 
Well, I mean, when you're talking base run, that guy who's one three five, he pick up his front foot, delivers the ball to home plate, catchers catch the ball. That's one three five, and then you you got to add in that today's catchers like a Matt Wieters who's one eight eight towards catch, catching the ball and releasing the second. It's one eight eight one three five. You got to be a pretty fast runner to get there. So what's the line for you where you say you know we got a real shot at running? Uh, one one three eight one three eight and the good base runners the the real good base runners anything one three five and higher. Yeah, and then you get a catcher like Paratek who retired who was not one point eight eight to the time he catches and getting the second you got a chance to to steal some bases. Exactly. That's when we talk about you can run on both the catcher and the pitcher depending on who it is. Big lead for Cody Ross. And a breaking ball. This is Lard Anderson, first baseman, batting ninth, four for nine with a home run this spring, and a 1 0 count with one away. We expect, uh, Wayne, have you heard this Red Sox team under Bobby Valentine is going to look a little different as far as their style, I guess. So, what are you hearing about that? Uh, they still got the same, they still got a pretty good team. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he's, he's there, he's the manager. He's there. But <laughs> They're doing a lot of apparently bunting and hit and running and trying to steal home and stealing bases. Uh, not sitting back very much this year, at least early on. Wayne, you could say it. It's only spring training. That's right. It's only spring training. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you know, when you go into Bean Town or they come to us, we we expect the battle. And you'll get one. <laughs> you got that right. And the delivery by Evelyn down low. Wayne, we really appreciate it. He's got him picked off at first base. Don't know if he was going to try and run or not. There's the throw, and it goes off the helmet into left field. It hit Cody Ross and ricocheted. They would have had him, and Chris Davis been able to get the throw to Hardy, but he couldn't. Yeah, what happens, though, is if, if Matt Wieters runs at him, you don't have to, if you're Chris Davis, pick the ball up and in a hurry try to throw it around the runner, and that's what happened. Because again, right here, he's just going to kind of go. He gets caught. He's leaning right here. Okay, now the quick throw. Now watch this. He's got to catch it on the run. He's got to throw right into the runner, and that's where you get the deflection. One of those extra outs we talked about. So they like to have Matt Weeders running at. Well, yeah, you can just kind of run after him. It's kind of like with a runner on second, and you and you you get him caught between second and third. You're taught to run right at him. Again, that play doesn't happen very often either, though. Anderson gets the walk, and that will put runners on at first and second. Wayne, go through that. If it's done now, right, how would how would you practice that? Well, again, that's a play that very often happens, and um, again, you need to run him. You need to run him at run at him. If, I'm, if, if if in that situation, you got to run after him, but. We just got a quick throw, got a quick release, and picked up. That ball was in the dirt. He picked it up real quick, and he only deal, doing what he's supposed to do. Eight spears, two on, one away, tie ball game, leadoff batter. If you're on the other side of the coin on that play, what is the runner supposed to do at that point? Uh -huh. Besides get off the field as quickly as possible when the game ends. <laughs> that, you know, that's a tough play. That's a tough play. He caught himself out in no man's land. When you catch yourself out in no, no man's land, and. Uh, yeah, you got to make some quick decisions. Do you want him trying to get the advanced head to the advanced base rather than come back? Uh, uh, and neither. <laughs> neither. Yeah. Neither. I mean, once that ball hit the dirt and you saw him pick it up, you should be, you know, once you keep that ball in front of him, you can't advance anyway. If he went both knees to the ground, a little different. Evelyn's got a two strike count with one away. Ross the lead runner and that's in the air to right field. That ball's hit deep. Wind blowing a bit that way. Runner at second is going to tag. Miller the catch. Throw will come into second base. Cody Ross will advance. Nate Spears is retired. And there are two away. Wayne we really appreciate it. Always great talking to you. Always the, uh, the big smile on the Orioles bench no matter what the situation. And uh, Love having you. Thank you. Well, thank you, Gary. Is Mike Bordick up there? Mike Bordick is up here. He's it's his watch day. He's not uh, on the air. Hall of Fame, Mike Bordick. Hall yes, of Fame, right. Mike Bordick. Exactly. We'll you give get a shout out to him. I'll give you. I will. You get to talk to him on Sunday. He's listening <laughs> to the shutout right now, and he's got a big smile on his face. <laughs> we miss you down at the dugout, Bordy. <laughs> Thanks, Wayne. All right. Wayne Kirby, first base coach of the Orioles. Mike Bordick, of course. Joining us for broadcast starting at our next spring game and Mike's here uh, working with the ball club.
as well as working in the truck and in the booth here today, getting ready for his broadcast debut. Two down, runners at first and third. Here's Pedroia. And he takes it inside for a ball. Yeah, he got it behind him talking about Evelyn, and uh, he took a 2 0 pitch into right field to create a first and second situation. But again, uh, we told you how difficult 91 RBIs last year with 21 home runs, and he also got off. You talked about Ortiz getting off to a slow start for Pedroia. Took him a long time to get going. And both of them pumped those numbers up in a hurry once they got it going. Well, you know, it's really, you look at him, he's, he's a little guy, of course. High draft choice. He said it well, first round. He said, I can't believe they ever drafted me. <laughs> but he airs it out on the ball up and in. You think, you know, he's quick enough to get to that pitch, which certainly pays dividends in Fenway Park. And then if you pitch him away, he does what he did before. He can wear out that gap between first and second. But the only place you can go is really down and hope that he hits it at somebody. I mean, that's how good a hitter he is. Red Sox led the league with runners in scoring position. In fact, they led the majors in batting average. Pedroia himself hit 316 with runners in scoring position last year. Dane Evelyn trying to work his way around this now goes to a 3 0 count with two down. Runners on at first and third. Evelyn in that battle for a spot in the Orioles rotation. He has pitched in an even 100 major league games 19 wins, 24 losses, 59 of those 100 as a starter. And uh, taking all the way Pedroia, and that is in there for a strike. And, and it is deck, a battle. Yeah. yeah, and then on deck, you've got last year's uh, MVP minus one, the second highest MVP guy, right? With 32 home runs. So you really can't pitch around Pedroia. You just have to hope you can make your pitches. Here's the 3 1 delivery, and he takes that to the gap and left center field. Cody Ross will score. Lars Anderson on his way to third. Benamit gets it in. Runners coming home. Relay by Andino to Wieters and safe. Slid around him and put the fingers on the plate. And a two RBI double for Dustin Pedroia. And the Red Sox retake the lead. Yeah, hesitation by Robert Andino. Pedroia doing what he does. 2 0 base hit the first time. Double on a 3 1 pitch. You can see it's right down the middle. Boy, you won't miss that. And right here, watch Andino catch it. Not a lot of stuff there. That just a little extra, and that's the difference with Anderson being out at home plate and uh, being able to uh, score another run. Pedroia getting his first two RBIs of the spring, three to one lead, five hits off Evelyn, and the pitch to Ellsbury is taken away. Ellsbury popped out his first time up. He's had only one hit. In 11 at bats so far this spring. Well, you're seeing what the extra outs do, especially against a team like the Red Sox, especially at this part of the lineup when Bedoya gets to come up when he should have been putting his glove on. And he drills it down the line, and that is a foul ball. You go back to the first inning, how the little things add up in a baseball game. Spears let it off with a bunt single. The Orioles did not take the bunt away from him. Jim pointed that out. We were talking. He did, and that opened it up, and they were able to get a run. Then in this inning, you end up with a leadoff single by Cody Ross. Good hit there. A walk to Lars Anderson, the number nine hitter. You don't want to do that. And then you end up, you had Ross picked off. He gets hit in the back of the head because the play wasn't carried out probably the way it should be. That opens it up for Pedroia, and he delivers. And so. Those are the runs have come for the Red Sox being advantageous. And then you go back to the comeback where that Evelyn looked like he could have had a chance of catching, which would have got him out of the inning. But again, uh, and this is not even the Ray line. Mm. You know, Gonzalez with a 338 average and pretty much hit anybody. You know, he's got the afternoon off or doing his work back in Fort Myers. A one ball, two strike count, with two down. With Ray off second base. Ellsbury will take the pitch away for a ball. Have you seen the new ballpark down there? The, the, I have not. The JetBlue ballpark? That, nope. And apparently for, what, $77.8 million doesn't have a clock. Pedroia said for an extra $2 million, they might have had a couple of clocks. There have been a lot of negative comments about that. Really? Ballpark. Yeah. There have what? about the way it was constructed and what's available uh, in the ballpark. and. It's like a Come mini house, mini Fenway, right? Mini Fenway yeah. was built to res yeah, sorry, has the wall, green monster, and everything. Hmm. But I'm not sure up to the standards they had expected, but that's all rumor now. But we, uh, I have not been down there to see it. 
here at Ed Smith Stadium. It couldn't be nicer. Everybody that comes here talks about how beautiful this facility is. The great job that was done last year and this year in the reconstruction work, and it is. That one's to left field. Betamete's going to play it on a hop. Here comes Pedroia being waved home. Throw to the cutoff man. Leaders. Nobody's got him. He didn't touch the plate. Pedroia trying to slide around him. Missed the plate with his fingers. Ellsbury gets the base hit. Betamete in left field on a bouncer that Readers had the plate blocked. Pedroia forced to try and just tick it on the way by. Didn't get it. Thorne, Jim Palmer back here at Ed Smith Stadium as the Red Sox retake the lead up by a score of three to one. Lester will be out for his second inning of work, and Nick Markakis is joining us live here in Sarasota. Uh, Nick, coming off the abdominal surgery, great to see you and uh, watching you at least. It looks pretty good. How you feeling? What's up, guys? Um, I'm feeling great. It's just uh, you know day by day getting better and better, and uh, you know, everything's going in the right direction. So uh, you know where I'm at right now, I'm happy. Are you going? I, there's a rumor, at least I'm told, that you may play next week, maybe Tuesday, Wednesday. That's the plan right now, unless uh, something were to happen between now and there. But uh, I think Wednesday I'm going to get my first start as uh, DH and uh, ease my way into this. How many at bats or games or whatever you're looking for? What's the progression? Um, no, it's just it all goes off my feel, uh, how I'm feeling, and uh, you know what I what can I bring that day and. Uh, you know, it's just a matter of taking it day by day. So we'll start out DH and then I'll ease my way into you know playing right field and uh, go from there. You know, you played just about, let's see, 160, 161 games. I think one year you only played 157 out of 162. That was your off year. How can you explain to people? I mean, is that just something that happens? I mean, where you just feel like you get used to it, you can show up to the ballpark, mindset, physical, you know, awareness of what you need to do? Yeah, it's just. Uh, you know the approach you bring to the ballpark every day. You know you want to be in there. You expect to be in there. Um, you know, and you want to be out there every day. It ain't fun sitting over here watching a ball game. It's a you know it's a lot funner playing out there in right field and uh, you know contributing any way you can. But uh, yeah, no, just stay healthy and uh, you know play as many games as you can. Is there any question at this point in your mind that you will be ready for opening day? Um, as far as far as I'm concerned, uh, you know. I want to be out there, and uh, you know, uh, as far as uh, you know, any setbacks, we're good right now. And uh, you know, opening day is, you know, that's what we're shooting for. We certainly hope we see you out there. Uh, this rivalry with the Red Sox. Can you talk about that just for a minute? I mean, it's the East, and it's all we talk about, but it really has grown here, and especially with the last game of the season last year. I mean, it's a little different than playing Kansas City or anybody else, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. I think uh, any team in our division is uh, a rivalry. You know, it's uh, as competitive as it comes, and uh, you know, you got a lot of guys in this uh, this division that are very competitiveness, and uh, 
You know, that's why uh, you, a lot, you see a lot of tempers flare sometimes. You know, it's just uh, it's just part of the game. You know, this division, I think, is the best division in baseball. You're not going to get any better baseball than what we are, where we're at right now. And, uh, you know, it's just a, a very competitive division and, and a very tough division. So, uh, you know, you play every game uh, with a lot of intensity. And, uh, you know, it's it's uh, it's fun to play and it's uh, it's fun to be part of. It's, uh, you know, great competition. And, you know, that's what you want at this level. It had to be pretty fulfilling to uh, with the Red Sox not playing well in September to beat them five out of the last seven games. Not to mention that last game, which was one of the more dramatic games that I've ever televised. Yeah, it, it was fun to be part of, and uh, you know, like I said before, um, you know, in this division, you know, whether it's the Red Sox, Yankees, Tampa Bay, or Blue Jays, it's uh, you know you're in a battle. Uh, you know, you're going to face them 19 times a year, and uh, you know, it, it's awesome. It's awesome playing in this division. It's awesome to be able to play against these guys and these players, and. Uh, you know, I don't take anything for granted. I go out there and play hard every day, and you know that's what uh, you know this this ball club does. From a player's perspective, Nick Marquez, is 18 games too many for uh, oh, against, against each, the, an opponent against each of these division teams? Um, no, I, I don't think so. I, I like the way it's playing out right now. You know, uh, you know, it's, it's fun playing against the, these guys, and uh, you know, you know what you, you know what you're going to have to bring to the table every day, and. Uh, you know, it's just awesome to be part of, and it's awesome to play in this division. You know, I can't tell you enough. It's, uh, you know, the best of the best, and, uh, you know, it's it's fun to be out there. All right. Nick, uh, thanks very much. We look forward to seeing you back out on the field and glad that everything's going well. We appreciate the time. All right. Thanks, guys. Nick Marquegas, the Orioles right fielder, off the abdominal surgery, and uh, certainly has looked good out on the field, both defensively and offensively. He's played uh, extremely well in the workouts. Wilson Betterman is trying to get a job with the Orioles as one of the utility players gets the walk off Lester. That is the second walk surrendered by Lester. He comes in one away here in the second inning. And everybody, and of course they always talk about it, uh, has better situational hitting, higher on base percentage. Betterman can do that. Switch hitter over almost two, three, 350. Uh, the Red Sox led the American League with a 349 team on base percentage. So Betterman showed you why uh, they went out and got him. Yep. And here is Chris Davis, the Orioles' first baseman, four for 13 with a home run so far this spring. In fact, the Orioles have only one long ball so far. He got it yesterday, fourth inning, off Scott Allerton as the Orioles beat the Phillies yesterday, one to nothing. Brian Mattis had a great outing. He worked four innings. Alfredo Simone, three. Oscar Villarreal, an inning. Miguel Skokolovich, an inning. And uh, Davis is homer. It's all the Orioles needed. And they beat the Phillies one to nothing. 1 0 count on Chris Davis. Jay Miller waiting on deck. Better meet at first. Lester's pitch will be taken away. Lester's trying to get the Orioles to swing at pitches that aren't strikes here. He's been doing that uh, in the two innings of work here. Well, and the like, Orioles aren't. Yeah, he still has not been able to establish his fastball. Kind of know how that feels sometimes. <laughs> You're out there, and again, it's a second start. I uh, read the article. He was trying to work on his change up the last time, but. He does have four quality pitches. 2-0 delivery. Davis will take it in again, trying to get the outside corner. Not getting the call. Chad Fairchild, the veteran umpire working behind the plate, has seen Lester, even in a spring training game, stare in a couple of times, asking, mm, maybe I'd like to have that one. What do you think? Well, you think he might be swinging 3-0 here. Mm -hmm. Fastball hitter, maybe get something down in the zone, better low ball hitter. He did. He will foul that one away. You're looking uh, for the long ball. The RBI is out of Davis. There will be a lot of strikeouts to go along with it. So, see if Mike Bordick was talking today instead of observing. Yeah, we could ask him. You know, because he hit three and all the time. He was that good. Yeah, he was. Yes, he was. He knew he was going to make contact. He knew he wasn't going to swing it back. That's right. Yeah. He was only going to go after the pitch that was his. It's all about the preparation. That's right. Mike's going to be joining us for. Half the regular season broadcasts and for the remaining spring training. Maybe games. sooner than later. You never well, know. if Jim decides he wants to go home early, a little quick. Uh, yeah, I need a little jump on it's the. It's going to be a traffic jam in Arcadia. Yeah. About four. I might have to beat it. Well, you could stop and look at antiques. Arcadia's a lot of great antique shops. Well, you know, I, I'm kind of getting used to that little ride across <laughs> the 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 inner lands of uh, Florida. Yes. Yes. Deep in the cattle country. Well, Arcadia. Yeah, I, I'm. Uh, you know, reef and beef there. That's, that's one of the finer restaurants. Then you got five guys in, in Okeechobee. 
And then probably your favorite. That would be an Indian town. There's a, There's kind a of, ball yeah. Yeah. We're going to get back to that in just yes, a minute. Yes, we will. We'll, uh, we'll we'll visit that. For as low as 159, you can become an Orioles partial season plan holder and enjoy a huge right. list of exclusive Orange Cardinal benefits. 20th anniversary, of course, at Camden Yards. One you do not want to miss. So become an Orioles season plan holder. 888-848-BIRD or Orioles.com for complete details. My favorite restaurant is? Well, that would be in Indian Town. Uh, yep. It's uh, Chef Chang's. Chinese and Mexican food to go. Yes. You don't have to linger. Only to go. You don't want to be lingering yeah. in India. They're not going to let no. you eat there because they know that they might get shot. If you stay <laughs> Well, no, no. Actually, it's a <laughs> farm community. But no, really. No, I mean, you like the food so little. No, bit. that was the day's in last night. That's where you're worried about getting shot. <laughs> Lovely place. Right across from where the marathon started today. <laughs> uh, yes. That's just down low. Have you come across the restaurant? I wish I knew the name of the town, but it's just one of those little crossroads on the way over. Where That's Okeechobee. Huh? Yeah, it's right on the left yeah, yeah, when you get into Okeechobee. Where the chickens are. Yes. Is that the one? Well, there's sign, all kinds of signs. Baby it's pigs a for sale. Though. It yeah, has yeah. like two tables. You pick and, your uh, chicken. You pick your chicken out in the yard. <laughs> <laughs> Down the line in left field, and that's going to be a foul ball by Jay Miller. You know, it's a little subtle things, but again, you know, we get back-to-back -back walks. Chris Davis swinging three and zero, oh, and I've been out there when a hitter swings three and zero. Oh, then all of you sudden, you know, wait a minute, I better be a little finer three and one. And anyway, he works the walk, so a couple of walks to get back into this game. And again, when you're talking about on base percentage against a guy you've never beaten. The little things might uh, add up, and even though it's only spring training, he might get right back in this game. Well, Miller's competing for a job, and he's done pretty well. He's four for ten with four RBIs. And a little check swing right there is going to be foul back. Well, that's, that's the lead runner, Davis at first, and one out. That's that little cut fastball. And as a hitter, you always know that it's there. And at the cutter, you just you don't see the spin. Some of the catchers on the backfields at the B game today were talking about it, and boy, it's just such a tough pitch to hit. Miller, one-two delivery to him, and nailed him. Now that's Lester. Yeah, well, there's that's Mid that's season. what he does. Yeah, you know, 180, what three strikeouts last year, 225 over 200 the previous years. Needs a strikeout, throws another cutter, and again a young hitter, a young power hitter with over 32 home runs at Triple A, just got pitched to. The big out right there. The Orioles down by two here in the bottom half of the second inning. And uh, here is Ryan Adams. Ryan Adams is the designated hitter in the ball game today. He's had one hit, eight at bats, one RBI so far in the spring training games. Ryan, a 24 year old who last year. Yeah, hit 370 against lefties. Yeah, good now, numbers. 281 overall with the Orioles and 89 at bats. Now, of course, not all lefties are like John Lester. No. So this will be a nice battle. Two down, two on. And comes in with a high strike and quickly down. This will be, uh, I don't know if Lester's scheduled to go three today or not. He's thrown a goodly number of pitches, which helps determine whether you go two or three at this point for well, these starters. It does now. It used to be you're going to pitch three. Yeah. Now they take pitchers out in the middle of the innings if, if the pitch count gets to where they don't want it to get. Yeah. And that swung out a missed and Lester really bearing down. Spring game or not, you can see him rearing back a little bit here. And Adams trying to chase one, make contact and didn't. Yeah, he got to 93, which is uh, the most velocity all afternoon. And again, the 0 and 2 count really makes it tough on Ryan because now he'll most likely get something out of the zone. DH batting ninth for the Orioles. Runners off first and second in the 0-2 delivery, and he got enough of that to foul it back. Orioles with a lot of new names on the roster. Ryan Adams, one of the members of the 40-man roster, classified as a rookie, and virtually all of them are in camp. Working out with the Orioles big club. That will start dwindling away shortly as players are assigned to the minor league camp. Buck Showalter wants to get a real look at what's available depth wise in the organization. 0 2 delivery and that'll be inside. And the other thing he wants to do is make sure people understand there are competitive positions. Peter Schmuck in our Twitter chat Orioles uh, announced the first round of cuts this afternoon. That'll come after the ballgame. 
Yeah, and a lot of guys trying to battle. You know, had a chance. You, you, you got Ryan Flaherty. He's got a number of the bats. He's a Rule Five guy. Matt Aminelli, Ryan Adam. I mean, a lot of those guys can play all over. They can play the outfield. They can play shortstop. Ryan more of just plays a shortstop, but also a second baseman. I liked him last year. Mm -hmm. Didn't any home runs, but he can wear out that right center field fence, which is the right field gap, or exactly where they're playing. Only 24 years old, major league level. He has appeared in only 29 games that coming last year as he's been in the Orioles minor league organization from Bluefield on up through Norfolk and on to the Orioles kind last of got, year. Yeah, kind of got labeled as one of those guys that was better with the bat than the glove. That's why I told him, not because Mike's here, but I told him, I said, you need to have, attach yourself to the hip to Mike Porter. That'll be hauled in by Lester. He'll make the throw, and uh, not a good one, but handled by Lars Anderson for the out. No runs, no hits, no errors, and a couple are left on base to complete on the beaches of Sarasota. Red Sox have the three to one lead in the ball game. Lead off bunt started at Nate Spears in the first inning, able to reach and ultimately will come around to score. That ground ball off the glove of Evelyn. And then the Orioles had a chance to get out of the inning. Caught in an apparent rundown, but the ball bounced off his head and would come around to score. Cody Ross. And the Red Sox have taken advantage of opportunities. Yep, extra outs and uh, getting behind Petroya. It's a double up the gap. Uh, Zach Phillips comes in and uh, look at those numbers. And again, the Orioles, uh, not only is he left handed, they are looking for a left handed specialist in the bullpen. And last year, the lefties, as so Ortiz will lead it off, perfect uh, way maybe to, to kind of see how he does against one of the better left handed hitters in baseball. Two for 20. And he struck out eight of those 20 batters. So very efficient against left handers. Here is uh, David Ortiz, designated hitter. Batting cleanup, Sweeney and Avilas will follow here in the third inning. For Danny Evelyn, the Orioles starter, a couple of innings, three runs, six hits, one walk, and two strikeouts for him. And Ortiz will take the pitch up high for a ball. 329 hitter against the left handers last year for Ortiz, almost the same right or left. He had 21 homers off the righties and eight off lefties. 1 0. And that was, uh, yeah. that was a really uh, <laughs> ungentle swing right there. Yeah, he didn't come all the way up uh, <laughs> you know, I 75 to bunt. We're going to leave that for Teixeira against right handed pitching when they put the shift on. I still think one of the major pivotal points, you know, obviously the pitching for the Red Sox in that September collapse, with, but Terry Francona, he doubled up with Ortiz. And Gonzalez and Buck Showalter with his five lefties in the bullpen was able to match up. And it really did make a difference. Uh, the only one game did he split the lefties with Pedroia. Should have done that a little bit more often. Probably would have made it more difficult for Buck to go to his bullpen and, and get the effectiveness which he had from the bullpen those last seven games. And that's something managers always hate to do. They always talk about bunching those left handers in the lineup for the very reason Jim was talking. And it's about. not that these guys, as you mentioned, it's not that they don't hit lefties, it's just they don't 
hit him for power, or especially Gonzalez. You know, he hit 338. Now, Chris Ellsbury, you know, second in the MVP, he hit everybody. And of course, he was hitting down in the lineup, but it just made it easier for the opposing manager to get the guys in that he wanted to and get the matchups he wanted. 2-2, two, two, and Ortiz will take it, and the count will go to 3-2. and two. So for Zach Phillips, 25-year-old, another one of the pitchers who really wants to get it done, acquired from Texas July 19. Phillips has been around the majors for just a total of 10 games since he broke in in 2005 in the minor leagues. But you can see right there, Gary, not afraid to use his breaking ball 3-2 count. That's why it's so difficult if you're a reliever. And you're supposed to come in. Starters usually can kind of feel their way because you know you at least hopefully you're going to be out there for a while. Relievers have to come in and a lot of times, especially if you're a setup guy or a middle inning guy, you got to use all your pitches with runners on. Much more difficult. Works from that first base side of the rubber. Ortiz hung in but didn't get all of it. Way up in the air to center. Jones is there and he puts it away and Ortiz is retired. He's old for two. The Orioles have announced their early bird promotion schedule packed with giveaways, special events for the upcoming 20th anniversary of Camden Yards, including the Orioles Legends Celebration Series. Six games throughout the year honoring the six greatest Orioles of all time. For a full list of upcoming promotions or to lock in your tickets, 888-848-BIRD or go to Orioles.com. Your fans looking forward to the uh, opener, which is going to be at home, the Minnesota Twins. It will be on April 6th. For the opener on a Friday, then the, the seventh and eighth, and then the Yankees will come in for a Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday three game. So, so soon, so soon. Hey, 18 times. <laughs> Got to get it started early. Here's Sweeney, and he will file that one off. We're going to talk a little bit about uh, this season and next season. Schedule wise, are going to be enormously different. We don't know how much different. But they're going to be enormously different because with Houston moving over to the American League, it's going to change the way uh, Major League Baseball schedules. Sweeney, oh. what a number that was, right back to the mound. So if you take a look here, what we're talking about is come 2013, the Astros go to the American League. That evens everything up in the divisions. It means there will be perpetual interleague play right from day one. Any day during the year starting in 2013 where every team is playing, there will be interleague play. And uh, what right now you play 18 games, it'll probably go to 30. Yeah. So it'll be 12 more games. And but show, uh, rather, uh, but Sea League has a committee which is right now taking a look at a number of different options as far as schedules are concerned, trying to figure out how they're going to do it. Number of GMs have commented saying it's going to change how we have to fill our roster. That ball is going to go to short. Avilas Hardy's got it and throws him out to retire the side. We'll come back and take a look at 2013 and the changes to come. Here it's three to one in Sarasota.
future major leaguer on hand watching here. Yep, that's you. I think you're going to be an Oriole center fielder, Jake. Talking about the schedule change 2013, here are a couple of the options that they're talking about. 16 games against division opponents, eight against the rest of the league, three opponents opposite league, three internet in rival games like the Red Sox, uh, if they're going to, or the Orioles and Nationals. 18 games versus the division, 60 total other teams in the league, 30 against interleague. That's another option. Uh, Katie Feeney, uh, Major League Baseball, is. One of those on the committee by Sealy is set up and they're trying to figure out how to do that. Chopper down to third. Big hop. Spears has got it. Gets the throw there. And then he knows who time it. it means pitchers will hit more from a perspective of the American League. And DHs will be used less in the American League. But the National League's got to figure out now with more DH use, how do they set their roster? Do you actually have a DH player that you designate as such? Well, you know, I think I always felt that they have enough guys because they have more position players. You know, guys are pinch hitting more that they usually can come up with a DH, but again, can you come up with a DH that's going to hit like Ortiz or some of the guys that, you know, have monster years? I think the, I mean, a lot of people, when you talk about why the National League has never gone to uh, the DH is just because of DHs make more money than, than your bench players and things like that. But I would think it would actually affect the American League teams more because your DH is going to you're going to lose them 15 times versus eight and that's why Bobby Valentine has got Ortiz playing some first base and Gonzalez and left and uh, his point is very very well made and as long as one of those guys don't get hurt what happens when you do play against the American League teams and Ortiz or the National League team and Ortiz is sitting on the bench are you as good a team as when he's hitting no no and that's his point so let's try something else it's spring training David may not like it, but I think he would like to be playing in Philadelphia against Roy Halladay other than watching him shut him out or something. And it also re-energizes the issue again. Do you do away with the DH? Players are never going to agree to that, obviously, because it's an extra position from the perspective of the Players Association. Or do you just uh, have a DH in every game? Do you get rid of the differential? I think the Pirates would like to have had a DH with A.J. Burnett after he hurt, <laughs> broke his orbital, right orbital bone trying to bunt. Yeah. I mean, look at Ching uh, Ming Wong. His whole career yeah. went. Nice little breaking ball there from Lester. Lester gets his first strikeout working in his third inning. Well, J.J. J. J. Hardy had such a good year that they're going to change. And again, Lester can do this. The 3 2 little backdoor slider, maybe cutter. But he's not going to get as many fastballs to hit because he was that good last year. Just took enough off. And you can just see him. He doesn't quite. Recognize the pitch, and it was a good one. Adam Jones, RBI base hit, driving in the Orioles runner after Andino had led off the first inning with a walk off Lester, one of three. Lester has surrendered in the game, and that's a strike. And putting a period on the 13 schedule, uh, it's supposed to come out in September. And the question of whether or not the DH rule gets changed is not, at this point, under discussion. It'll stay the same. That goes to short. Avilas with the cannon gets it over, and Lester, we suppose, has finished up his day, giving up a run on just one hit.
Here in Sarasota, Red Sox have the three to one lead. Talked with Buck Showalter earlier today about the competition in camp for the Orioles. Here's what he had to say. Nobody's that smart. You need to keep an open mind about it. You know, this is that time of spring where you really get fooled. In about seven to ten days, you'll really get a barometer on what, what's real and what's not. You know, the double-A, triple-A get, guys get out of here. The, the, the eyesight, as far as the look in guys' eyes, when they know it's coming down that time and they're getting ready to ring the bell. So, from my experience, you just kind of you watch, you take it in, but you don't start making decisions in the uh, early part of March. You'll make a lot of mistakes, and uh, we'll take it all in. We got a lot of baseball here. If you walked up to me and said, to, "What would you do right now?" I got the I got an answer from my perspective. But I like to hear other people's perspective too. Like show while they're talking today, that full uh, interview will be on the Mid Atlantic Sports Report tomorrow. We talked about a number of issues with him midway through the spring training. A three to one lead. Orioles go to their third uh, pitcher, Chris Tilbin. Yeah, struggled in his first time, but threw the ball very well. You know, another one of the guys that worked out with Brady Anderson on his conditioning, his windup at least appears to be a little bit better. Velocity was way up, as was Brian Mattis's. So those are the numbers last year. 13 starts for the Orioles. And yet another pitcher battling for a position. So and what we go yeah. to the uh, fourth inning. So he comes out and drops off a curveball to Ross. And of course, anytime you do that, now he is looking dead red, and that's what he hits. That's what he did the first time up. He but has singled and scored a run in the ball game. Cody Ross, five hits, ten at bats so far this spring. Chris Tillman appeared against the Red Sox on the sixth. He went two innings, gave up three runs, two earned on four hits, did not walk anybody, and struck out one. This is his second appearance. Fouls that one back. So far for Evelyn and Phillips. There's the line. Yeah, a lot of extra outs for Dana and uh, parlayed into three runs. And then, of course, Phillips comes in and pretty much did what he did last year. Pitches well. Got the lefties out. At least two of them. Cody Ross with a 1 2 delivery, and he's got a base hit. Just hung in on that one. It'll be played by Miller. He'll make the turn and stay. And Ross is two for two and continues to have a fine spring at the plate. Oriole Park is the perfect setting for your next group outing. Gather up family, friends, co workers, colleagues, and have a great day or night at Orioles Baseball at Camden Yards. Discount tickets are available for groups as small as 15 or party facilities up to 1,000. Camden Yards, make it your next group outing. Details 888 848 Bird or Orioles.com. That'll be hit number seven. For the Red Sox. Now Tillman will go to the stretch. Ross on at first. Kelly Shopik, a strikeout victim, his first time up. Yeah, he didn't get a lot of uh, good fortune on that. A pretty good pitch. Jammed him and he just shot it into right field. The old hang with him hit. Well, I like Cody Ross. Uh, you know, he played on the Giants in 2010 when they won. He can hit some home runs. He's hit over 20. And he was playing in the, for the Marlins. He should fit very well in that offense, especially in Fenway Park. And especially early with Carl Crawford out of there for an unknown time. Sweeney, Cody Ross, McDonald are going to have to uh, fill the roles in right and left field. So Bobby Valentine will, we suspect, will do a good deal of juggling depending on the opposing team and pitcher. Yeah, he's already announced that. Uh, I think the team with the most lineups last year, most different lineups, was the Mariners. Of course, the worst offensive team. They had 153 different lineups. But Bobby said, "We're not going to have a setup lineup." But you kind of know that who's going to be playing. They must not know where they're going to be batting. Foul back into the screen. Red Sox team that uh, led the majors in just about every offensive category last year: runs, hits, doubles, extra base hits, RBIs, on base slugging. OPS that's leading the majors in all of those categories and they hit 296 at home which was the number one average in the majors in a home ballpark. Dustin Pedroia Ellsbury certainly two of the reasons why that offense has been so monumental breaking ball hit in the air to left field. That meets going back Jones going back and Jones will get there and he's got it. Ross, who is all the way to second, will come back and a nice play by Adam Jones in center field. Yeah, Kelly Shopit's going to hit a hanging curveball, and all he does is get it up in the breeze, and it keeps going, going, going. But there is Jonesy. It should look pretty easy. 
vying for a gold glove. As he did last year in center field. He made some spectacular defensive plays. Well, I think another thing that we saw Adam do, especially in Baltimore, it's such a small ballpark, play a couple steps deeper. You know, get to that ball very easily. Otherwise, if you're a couple of steps in, it's really a difficult play, even if you do have his kind of speed. Keep an eye on Cody Ross over at first base. Yeah, Chris Tillman, 6'6, six, six, but for a tall pitcher, you know, maybe slow to the plate, but he does hold runners well. Lars Anderson, number nine hitter, drew a walk, scored his first time up. Leaders, he snapped a couple of throws down there to hold him close. That'll make Bobby Valentine and Buck Showalter happy. I mean, Buck Showalter wants Weeders to be cognizant of these chances. Valentine wants him to throw the ball around. That doesn't throw many away. He doesn't allow a whole lot of guys to steal either. They were close to 40% last year. Tillman with a 1 0 delivery on the way. Oh. Anderson on top of that one. Great pitch by Tillman. Yeah, nice little change up in a fastball count. He sold that change up like you try to sell a used Toyota. <laughs> with Vega. With Vega. I don't know where that came from. That's from the. That's from last night. <laughs> I have no idea. I can't even start to explain that. Well, I could if you were. I have snapshots of my hotel last night, Eric. Just for just for memories. Just for memories. Because you're not going to stay there again. No. Nobody would. <laughs> Ground ball touch short. Artie's right, got a force play. There's one and there's two. So Anderson hits into the double play, 6 4 3, and the Tillman, despite giving up a leadoff single, faces only three batters. Partners SNN 6 and Sarasota Herald Tribune are hosting the second annual food drive here at Ed Smith Stadium today. All donations to the All Faiths Food Bank. Food items, collecting monetary donations as well. Proceeds from a silent auction of Orioles memorabilia also included. And all goes to the All Faiths Food Bank. Distributing food to more than 7,100 people weekly in Sarasota and DeSoto counties. Here's Matt Waiters. Lester is not gone. He's going to work his four innings, so he'll stay on, having given up only one run on one hit, the hit by Jones in the first inning that brought in Andino, who had walked and stolen second base. Orioles have left uh, two on since then. That was in the second inning with a couple of walks. That ball, the left field, is going to be in the yard. And Weeders will be retired. Cody Ross drifting over. Matt had popped out his first time up. I always thought the important part of pitching uh, maybe an extra inning or when you're close to your pitch limit, whatever that is, is that 
again pitching being so much touch and feel is that you actually get the pitch. You're not throwing, you're not overthrowing, you're in a rhythm. We saw him struggle in the first, settled down right there, change up, so he's using all his pitches. When he needed a strikeout, and he was able to do it on a couple of occasions, struck out Jay Miller when he had a couple of guys on him with one out. So he's he's done his John Lester impression. Yes, he has. Reynolds popped out his first time up. Yeah, think of John Lester. I look at his stuff and I look at the run support over six six point four five runs a game, and this is a guy that should be winning if he can stay healthy somewhere between twenty and twenty five games. He's that good. And you know the Red Sox, as you mentioned, are going to score runs. But he had the second second highest run support, I think. In the well, league. he's up there. I think Sabathia gets a lot of runs. Obviously, yeah. if you pitch for the you know the Yankees, they were number yeah. two and. The American League and runs. The Red Sox, as you mentioned, number one. In just about every offensive category. A 3 0 count to Mark Reynolds. And he gets a green light. He's taking all the way, and it is in there for a strike. Uh, an average of 6.86 runs per nine innings pitch, second highest in the majors behind uh, Derek Holland of Texas, who got over seven and a half runs a start. Think of how many games you would have won if you'd have had seven and a half runs to start. Yeah, but what pressure? <laughs> For what? No, I mean, yeah. <laughs> give me all those runs. I really didn't like to get run. I, I wanted runs early, but I didn't want runs early because if you got runs early and you relaxed at all, you didn't have enough. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> but I get your point. Yes. Six point eight. I'd still yeah. take them. Yes, yeah. I would. Oh, would you ever? Great to delivery and he laces that one but it's going to be a foul ball. You know early in my career. I said I don't need runs I'll just go out there and pitch and then of course when the power glass has been turned over. You'll take a win any way you can get it. So give me the six point eight five <laughs> runs. Seven not enough. <laughs> not enough. And get him early. And get him early and get him off. Reynolds with a three ball two strike count. Two for eight in the spring so far, and oh, that will be yeah. walk number four. That's that borderline pitch you talked about, yeah. He's had a few of those questions. Good news for the Orioles uh, in what could have been a very bad news situation. Nolan Reimold hit with that pitch, and I mean, everybody thought it was going to be really serious. Took it right in the meat of the jaw, as he put it. But the scans and the x rays, there is nothing broken. He has a chipped tooth. But show Walter, uh, we're talking with him about it this morning. Primo is going to go to the dentist tomorrow to have the tooth fixed and is expected to be back and playing again on Tuesday. Alex Cobb was the pitcher who was, was horrified. Yeah, you don't like to do that. Yeah. You know, there's, there's one thing, obviously, pitching in because it's an important part of pitching and hitters get comfortable, but when the ball gets away, that is very, very difficult. Talk to Dolan, and I saw Reggie, Reggie Jackson, when he played with us in '76. Doc Ellis hit him in the side of the face, and he was actually right in the kind of the meaty part of the face, which is what happened to Nolan. So he's, I don't know if you're ever fortunate getting hit in the side of the face, but he certainly said it, it could have been a lot worse. Anderson after it couldn't catch up. Danny Ablin started the ball game for the Orioles today. The uh, left-hander bidding for a spot in that rotation, and he's joining us right now. Dana, uh, how about a self-assessment of uh, how it went today? Uh, it wasn't my prettiest day, obviously, but uh, these guys are obviously a tough lineup, and they made a couple mistakes, and they paid for pretty much all of them. Yeah, a couple of extra outs there, um, and we don't like to pitch to Pedroia 2-0 and 3-1, do we? <laughs> no, we don't. He, uh, I'm sitting up here, and I don't want to do that. <laughs> he's pretty good in those counts. <laughs> What are you working on, Dana, at this point of spring training? Uh, definitely my fastball command right now. Still, it's it's close, but still got some room to get better. I mean, I made a handful of mistakes with that today and uh, didn't quite have a feel for my slider, so definitely got to work on that a bit. Yeah, you were talking about that be, uh, the before the game. Is, is that something, I mean, can, is it innings? Is it just starts? Is it the fact that, you know, big guy, you got to get over your front side, all those kind of things involved? Yeah, definitely. I mean, it's a little bit of everything. It's early still, and... Uh, you know, we take a couple months off between seasons, and then it feels like starting over sometimes. So, you know, got some got some room to get better, but I'm feeling better every day. But Joel, I was talking about the uh, competition. Uh, do you sense that, feel that, from a pitcher's perspective here, trying to find a slot? Uh, I mean, obviously there's competition, but at the same time, these guys are all my friends. So, uh, you know, I, I go out and just try and do what I'm capable of doing, not really worry about what everybody else is doing. 
you know, I can't control that. So uh, just get my work in and, and try and improve every day. What you, was the what was it like? You know, you won 12 games, and, you know, made the all-star team down at AAA. I always heard that the Pacific Coast League is a little bit more friendly to hitters than it is pitchers. What was it like pitching in Albuquerque you know, with the altitude? <laughs> It's, uh, I always say it's like pitching on the moon. <laughs> Not much for gravity there. But, uh, I mean, you just got to keep the ball on the ground. If you can do that, then uh, you can succeed. And I did a pretty good job of that last year. So, got to get back to that this year. Does it help you this year, the fact that you have already pitched in both leagues over the years? Uh, I mean, it's nothing I've really thought about much. I mean, I know pretty much hitters in every league, guys that have been around, I've seen them all pretty much. So, it, it doesn't really make a difference for me. Could but, you? Can you relieve? Really could you really? Yeah, I mean, I've done it. I've got, I don't know, probably 40 relief appearances or something like that in my career. So it's something I've done. I, I haven't done it consistently since, uh, I don't know, 05 was the last year. I think I was really like a reliever. But it's something that I know I can adjust to and do it if I need to. And the turn by Pedroia. And Betterman hits into the double play. Dana, thanks very much for taking time to join us. And uh, good luck here in spring training. Thanks. Right, thanks. Dan Eagle joining after starting for the Orioles in this one. 3 1. Red Sox have the lead. And we hope you'll join us next Sunday. More O's action from Sarasota. The O's take on another AL East rival. It'll be the Yankees. Our coverage on Masson HD will begin at 7. All the access you need right here on Masson. And Mike Wardick will be making his debut as an announcer here on Masson in uh, next Sunday's game. He is sitting here today watching, observing, hoping yeah, I'm waiting for not to emulate out of that. the guys on the air. <laughs> Very quietly. Yeah, he even took off his headset. He did. This. He didn't want to hear anymore. I understand that though. Tired of us talking about it. <laughs> Here's Nate Spears. Well, I'm looking forward to it because if I'm not doing the games, I'm looking because he, and I'm not saying this because he was here. Mike Bordick was always one of my favorite players because uh, when I learned from Cal Ripken Sr., is every time in A ball, every time you come to the ballpark, you try to get better, and nobody did it in Mike better than Mike. It's not what you said to me last night. No, but, but it's here. <laughs> no, he's Spears. Spears a single scored and has a flyed out 1 1 delivery. I don't know how we're going to survive with a couple of former Mainers. Yeah. yeah. Right. But that's, a, that's the trouble spot right there. Two guys how do you Maine. guys do warm weather? My, well, we'll, we'll get Mike to talk about that in the air. How do ball players? I've always, I mean, I grew up in Maine. The ball players coming out of the University of Maine playing and making it to the majors, like Mike, Billy Swift. Uh, we've been a number, we've been a number, but I'm telling you how they do it, I do not know. So well, even Mike, Mike, yeah, Mike Flanagan used to always talk about it. They, yeah. you know, they just uh, shovel the snow off the infield and yes. the pitchers mound and all that. And, and you hope you make long trips to California, Texas, or Florida where you play about three games a day in order to get ready for a short league season. A one ball, two strike count. Chris Tillman on the mound for the Orioles. Spear, Bedroya, and Ellsbury are due up 
Yeah, trying to put him away after getting ahead with two early with two strikes. And we'll take the pitch down low. So Tillman takes it all the way to three balls and two strikes. The Orioles have a run on one hit and one error. The Red Sox three runs on seven hits, no errors. Overcast skies, and actually that's a blessing today. The temperature was going to be in the mid 80s. And got him, Tillman. Catches the corner, gets the call. Yeah, perfect 3 2 pitch. Not only did he throw it over, he throws it right on the outside corner. There is the glove. And, uh, Chris Tillman, I, when I was talking to him uh, in California, probably back in January when Brady Anderson was working with him, I said, You have a tendency to fall off. He said, Well, high school. They told me, pretty girl over your left shoulder, grab her. I go, Really? I said, why don't we move that pretty girl right behind Weeders? <laughs> Grab her behind home plate. And that'll help your mechanic. <laughs> he said, that's probably a good idea. And what he's trying to do is just, you know, he's so big, so he just has a tendency to watch that left shoulder comes up and out. And if you could stay a little bit more down the hill, then you can use your leverage. Uh, Jason Hamels, the Royals fans are going to get to see him for a guy that's well, maybe even an inch taller than. Chris Tillman, he really has a good down plane angle. Here's the 1 1 delivery, and Pedroia will take it. Pedroia's had a big day already as he's picked up a single and a couple of RBIs in his next event. So, watch the front side. See, that's pretty good there, but you can see again that little recoil. He comes back. So, if you can just feel like you're reaching, go grab some air. And a little cutter misses. The amazing thing about Dustin Pedroia is that he's little, got great hand-eye coordination. That and doesn't if you if you grab him, he's not like he's spent a lot of time in the workout room. He can just make contact with great bat speed. Comes around the left field this time. Betamid is there and he's got a good pitch by Tillman as he came in and he dropped it, but he had it long enough on the transfer. So the outs recorded against Pedroia two down. Yeah, a little humpback line drive on a hanging breaking ball. There it is. And right there, he just taking it out of his glove. The glove toss. Third base umpire right out to make the call. Chad Whitson working at third today with the four man umpiring group. Hey, why all the four man crews? Usually we have three. We have I guess they this year it's been four for yeah. every game. I think they brought a lot of the uh, younger umpires are getting chances in these games. Yeah, we had uh, we had the Walkie brothers about a week ago Monday. Only Tim today. And that'll be fouled away. Ellsbury a single and he has popped out and uh, 0 for two. Uh, one for two in the ball game for Ellsbury. Only his second hit. He's got a couple of hits and 12 at bats. So far this spring. Well, what an impact player. I mean, he can steal bases last year for the first time, hit home runs, over 300, and as we told you, second in the MVP voting. The short is going to be a tough play. And he's got it and retires the side in order. So Tillman, with a couple of good innings, stays the one six gives up just one hit. Red Sox are in on top three to one.
day is almost here. Less than four weeks. The game is sold out. The only way to get seats is to become an Orioles partial season plan holder. You'll enjoy dramatic savings on the cost of single game tickets. Even have a chance to buy seats for the toughest ticket in town. Opening day at Camden Yards. You'll enjoy the full range of exclusive orange carpet benefits for details. 888-848-BIRD or go to Orioles.com. We're talking about the weather here in Florida. If the weather holds up in Baltimore, opening day may be very much like being in Florida. It's supposed to be 80 degrees in Baltimore on Tuesday and stay into the mid to upper 70s the rest of the week. Lordy, Justin Thomas. Well, look at those numbers. And uh, obviously a reliever last year. 63 games, good record. Well, Middlebrook, who is having his first chance at an extended spring training in one of the big names the Red Sox hope in their future, has come on to play at third base. Nate Spears is out of there. Yeah, Kevin Euclid is going to play third during the season, but uh, he's got a $13 million option. And of course, if he can stay healthy, they may pick that up. But uh, Middlebrook may be the successor down the road somewhere. And his first real look for any extended time here in spring training this year. Here's Chris Davis. Davis drew a walk in his only time up. He gets a shot at another left hander and Justin Thomas on the mound. Chris looking to find some long ball activity with that one home run he's picked up four for 13. 28 year old out of Toledo Ohio signed as a minor league free agent last fall Justin Thomas. And punches that one away. He pitched the triple A Indianapolis eight and two. His record, 3.89 earned run average. He has played uh, very few major league games in Seattle back in the 2008. He got in a few major league games, but that's been it. Total yeah, 20. Pretty typical for a lot of young lefties that maybe aren't overpowering. They start as starters, and then the, the evolution gets them to the bullpen. Their job, of course, to get lefties out. I want to mention while we were talking about umpires a minute ago, send along our very best to the Wendelstadt family, Harry Wendelstadt, big league umpire, 66 through 98, 73 years old, passed away, a triple family group of umpires and great, wonderful people. And we're really going to miss Harry Wendelstadt. That'll be played in center by Ellsbury Davis retired. Yeah, what a nice man, great umpire. Now, Part of the baseball family. Harry's dad passed away. I was doing a game in ESPN in San Diego, and it was a game where all of them were scheduled to umpire in the same game. It would be the only time Major League Baseball had set it up, and Harry's dad passed away just the week of that game. They never got to do it, but in honor to honor his father, Harry and Hunter, his son, did umpire in that game before going back for the for the wake for his dad and for Hunter's granddad. Was a, that was a tough night, boy, for the umpires. Here's Jay Miller, strikeout victim, his first time up, and he will take the pitch on the inside corner for a strike four for 11. So far, the spring for Miller. Yeah, he got pitched to his first time up by John Lester, a couple of cutters. Swung right over him. Talked about the battles that are going on for the Orioles. Miller is another one of those. But Showalter mentions his name a lot. Kind of likes what he sees from the outfielder and with the bat. Here's the 2 1 delivery to him. Big cut over the top of it and a two ball, two strike count. Again, just a, uh, you know, Thomas last year led the International League in appearances. And right there, fastball count pulls the string a little bit. Power hitter. I'm sure he's probably aware of it. And another one. Yeah. Another mystery. It's a little bit off. 85 miles per hour. You throw it under the zone. You get good movement and a good changeup. Great arm action. And then, of course, you also get the late movement. Tough to track. So Thomas gets a K to start it out. Lester, four innings, gave up only a run on one hit. He struck out one and walked four. John Lester getting in his four innings of work. Ryan Adams, number nine hitter, designated hitter for the Orioles in this game. And he grounded back to the mound his first time up. 
One for nine this spring for Ryan. Two down, nobody on. Red Sox three seven and zero. Oh. The Orioles one one and one. That'll be a souvenir. Take a look at two managers who certainly have had success. Bobby Valentine back after being in Japan for a number of years, coaching with Texas and the Mets before that. His record. Buck Showalter, the Orioles manager. The, the Yankees, Arizona, Texas, and now the O's. Two who have been around. Seen a lot of players and a lot of baseball and both meticulous in their preparation for games. Right center field. Didn't get that one on the heavy part of the bat. Hauled in by Sweeney and a 1 2 3 inning for Justin Thomas. Red Sox and the Orioles meeting for the second time this spring. Red Sox leader. Twentieth anniversary of Camden Yards, big moment. Ninety-six, September six, Eddie Murray, number five hundred, third player in history to have three thousand hits and five hundred or more home runs, came in the seventh inning against the Detroit Tigers, and that will be one of the many moments remembered all season long as Camden Yards does celebrate his twentieth anniversary. You can become part of that. Get behind the scenes, track every Utah Street home run, count down the top 20 Camden Yard classic games. Just go to CamdenYards20.com. That one's going to go to second base. Ortiz has retired and 0 for 3 with a strikeout, a fly ball out, and now the ground ball. Out. Yeah, the, uh, the little shift. Chris Tillman throws it, he ducks because he's right back up the middle, and JJ Hardy standing there. That's what you do. First time ever faced it. Like speaking of 500 home runs, Mickey Mantle, I saw him hit his 500 home run off of Stu Miller in Yankee Stadium against the Orioles. Hit a ball through my leg. I was disappointed until Louis Aparicio picked it up and threw him out. Boy, that's why he's going to Cooperstown. He's you know, smarter than I am. It's good to have <laughs> smart infielders. Well, Wayne Kirby made a great point. Mike Bordick certainly would attest to this. If you get a pitcher who can hit a spot, it's a lot easier to play good defense and vice versa. You know? Pitch to the defense. Oh, there's a good changeup. In the air to center field. This will be Jones getting back under it. Sweeney's retired. So Chris Tillman, who struggled his first time out, much, much better today. Just every once in a while, still maybe falling off, but all in all, wind up a lot better and stuff's a lot better. Little autograph signing time. Kids can get close to the bullpens here. Yoshi Wada down in the bullpen. Some kids leaning over and getting some autographs. Two down and a one strike count on Avilas. Mike Avilas has grounded out twice. And Tillman, nice jam shot. Reynolds, tough running throw. He got him. And that'll retire the side in order. And Chris Tillman with a very impressive couple of innings work here in Sarasota, where the folks who aren't here are there.
in gorgeous Sarasota. Beautiful day. Red Sox have the 3 1 lead over the Orioles. And to the mound, uh, he's vying for that fifth spot in the rotation. Veteran Aaron Cook. Yeah, they have a number of guys. Andrew Miller, uh, he's had a little bit of soreness. We saw him, the big lefty, but again, when he's healthy, which he wasn't last year, broken finger early on, all kinds of. Uh, Records uh, 33 years old. He will turn 33 in February, so he's had some excellent years. He's a ground ball pitcher. 2.63 grounder throughout his career to every fly ball in the air. And when you want to compare him, let's see Brandon Webb, Derek Lowe, and then Jake Westbrook, who's now pitching with the Cardinals. Orioles try to get back with Andino, the leadoff batter, and uh, he will take the pitch on the inside corner for a strike. Byron Navarne is doing the catching. This is the other catcher we talked about. He's looking for a job, and uh, Jason Rupp goes in right field with Sweeney out of the ball game. And a grounder right back to the mound, handled by Cook. And Dino with an 0 for 2, a walk and a run scored in the game. One away, bottom of the sixth inning. That'll bring up J.J. Hardy. Yeah, that little two seamer just runs in on Robert Andino's fist. Boy, movement. Uh, velocity 88, but movement. Hard to get the barrel of the bat to the ball when it's dancing. Cook, one of those veteran pitchers uh, who was in Colorado for a number of years because of that fly ball, ground ball ratio Jim was talking about. And they were trying to make sure that the staff in Colorado, if they could, that every one of them was a ground ball pitcher for obvious reasons in a ballpark where has tended to give up a few home runs. Quieted down a bit by the humidor and the yeah. balls that are put in it, but still. It well, it'll be part. interesting with uh, Jeremy Guthrie, of course, American League with the DH, uh, prone to throw in some home runs. We'll see how he does up there. But certainly, it's going to help their staff because pitches right around 200 innings. He'll want a double humidor. <laughs> oh, why not? <laughs> and you get them really Which, damp. Did you ever see the humidor? No. Yeah. I went to. Well, uh, you smoke cigars, so well, I, I do know you smoke saw cigars. That has nothing to do with this. Thing. Oh, okay. So, uh, Hardy will take it. I mean, we talk about it as though it's some big famous thing. It's just a little safe in the wall. I mean, it's just a little four by four thing. They put a hole in the wall and put what you would put for cigars in a humidor. Well, when I first came up, we'd go to uh, Old Comiskey Park, and the, the White Sox had great pitching staff. So, you know, Joel Harlan, uh, really uh, well, but this is going back to, to Gary Peters, Tommy John, and. The balls would sweat because they'd keep them in this damp room because the colder the balls wasn't going as far. In fact, they froze the balls. Uh, Rocky Calavito hit four home runs against the Orioles, and then they had a home run hitting contest about three or four years later. They froze the ball. He couldn't hit out of the infield. <laughs> Rocky wasn't happy, and he was a great guy. You don't want to make Rocky. No, 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 no. Rocky Calavito. He could, yeah, he could hit. Big, strong guy, a nice guy. Until you froze the ball, he didn't very happy. <laughs> But again, the damp ball. I mean, you pitch in Chicago on a Sunday in the ball swing. Can you okay, towel off this ball, please, before I throw it? So the humidor, apparently the humidor, I guess it just gives it a little bit of moisture up there because of the air being so dry. That's the idea. It's supposed to be an equalizer. But, of course, when the ballpark was built, they said that they had constructed the ballpark to be an equalizer for the Mile High City. That didn't work out too well. Pitch is taken down low. And Hardy is on. So the Orioles have got the potential tying run to the plate with one away, sixth inning. Jones coming up. Adam's got the only hit the Orioles have. It came back in the first inning, an RBI single that brought home Andino. Well, he's due. Come on. Marlo Hill uh, coming down the line at third to get the signs. Home run side. Well, the Marlo ought to be the pinch runner. Xavier, who played in the B game today. Yes, he did. He was playing in this one. So Xavier Avery with good speed over at first base and uh, one away. Adam Jones against Cook and the pitch is in there for a strike. Yeah, Aaron Cook actually when the uh, in the Rockies played the the Red Sox in 2007 in the World Series started one of the games. Six innings, six hits, three runs. The Sox would win their second World Series in three years. Came easy after they went, what, 87 years and won in 2004. Just took all the fun out of it. 
Runner not going. Jones, that comes off the plate to first base. Anderson will get it to Cook. It'll move the runner up. Unfortunate for Red Sox actually to get the out. Two down. A real chopper by Adam Jones. Well, oh, there your spring training drills. You get over there, first baseman communicates. That's why the pitcher can't hesitate and wait to see if he should go. You take off and well, everybody's yelling. yelling. Usually every ball hit to the right side. Get over there. You know, catchers yelling it, infielders are yelling it. Two down, here's Waiters. That's uh, 0 for 2. He has popped out, flied out. Only 1 for 12. So far this spring for Matt Wieters. Matt talking about uh, the enormous job defensively of learning these pitchers. So many new pitchers in camp for the Orioles end at a time where the final decisions on who's going to make the staff probably won't come until late in spring training, which means he's got to cover the spectrum. As far as knowing who the pitchers are, what they throw, what they're like, how to handle them. And again, 24 days till they break camp, he's got plenty of time to learn it. I, when I talked to Kelly Shopich, who started behind the plate for the Red Sox, I said, Have you caught John Lester? He said, But no, not in a game, but in both games. Yeah. So you get somewhat of an idea. And of course, Kelly knows Lester because he had a bat off when he was playing with the, the Rays. Bobby Valentine was talking the other day about Salta Lamacchia, his starting catcher, who's Who's trying to become a leader on this team now with Jason Veritek retired and Salta Lamaki doing the work? Valentine said, looking for him for some leadership since he's out there every day and with his staff. He's got some new names. Strike taken by Weeders, and it'll go to two and two. Two down, runner at second base, Xavier Avery. Yeah, I think that's going to be hand in hand because of Salta Lamaki is inexperienced when you have Beckett and Lester and Buckholz, your three big three. Mm -hmm. A little looping breaking ball there. Again, the one thing, whether it's Jason Baratek or, or not, and of course, I don't think anybody knows how prepared he was. It's when a catcher puts a sign down, it's a, it's only a suggestion. You still got to want to buy into it if you're a pitcher. Here's a three-two, a two-down, and another off-speed wrinkle. And this is with that one. So two walks in the inning surrendered by Cook. And the Orioles are two down, two on. And Mark Reynolds coming to the plate. Mark has drawn a walk and has popped out in the ball game. Red Sox, Lester, Beckett, Buckholtz, and uh, Bard, of course, moving into the rotation from the bullpen. And then the number five spot is open. Aceves, uh, Vincent Padilla, Cook, Miller, the left-hander. Steve Tollison has come on to do the running. Matt Suzaka is not going to be ready until mid-season, so he's not in that mix of pitchers vying for the spot to open the year in the rotation. And Reynolds will file that one right off the end of the bat. Yeah, I got to think that there'll be a lot of hitters in the American League that would like to see Alfredo Aceves start. You wouldn't have to see him pretty much every day, and that's the way he pitches. Ten and two last year, did have four starts. He certainly had them. At least in my mind, could start. But what does that do to your bullpen? Yeah. Reynolds waiting on it. Takes it in the air to right center field. Ellsbury will get over and put it away. Orioles retired. No runs, no hits, no errors. A couple left on base. We've completed six. And Sunny Sarasota, three to one, Red Sox.
three to one lead. Runs coming early in the ball game, and the pitchers uh, shutting the opponents out the rest of the way. And here we see Lewis Ayala coming on last season with the Yankees. Yeah, boy, did he have a nice year. And of course, you get him different arm angles. Got a little slider cutter. Of course, he learned the cutter from Mariano Rivera. That's I think I might pay attention if Mariano's out there on his way to the Hall of Fame with 600 plus saves. Ayala will get a little work in here. Nice job by Tillman in his work. The Orioles getting some defensive changes completed in this game. Hester will come on to do the catching as Matt Weeders will get the break. Tollison, who came on to pinch run, is going to be at second base. Tanelli will come on and play at third. Manny Machado is on at short. Spelling Hardy and Avery, who came on as a pinch runner, will now be in center field. Xavier Avery for Adam Jones. The so changes for the Orioles and Ayala will be going against the bottom part of the order for the Red Sox. Chris Tillman, a real fine job in relief. Yeah, he really ate through the ball well, used all his pitches. Great changeup. So Dana Evelyn maybe not helped defensively. Didn't catch a ball himself. Messed up a rundown. This, the Aaron throw. Phillips pitch well. Tillman pitch well. And of course, for the Red Sox, Lester did what he usually does. Doesn't give up many runs. Foul tip. Little piece of Hester in the umpire. Chad Fairchild on that one. And Cody Ross taking the strike. Ross has had two singles now. He's six for eleven. The spring training. Cody Ross is really going to add, as Jim said, to this. Red Sox outfield. And uh, if you can believe it, they may even be a little stronger in the outfield this year with the addition of Cody Ross and Sweeney. Mm. Once Kyle Crawford uh, gets back, they're hoping he's going to be able to get his play back up to what it was a couple of years ago. Well, I think when you have a winning team, you, you want guys with character and you know, you certainly know that Cody Ross can hit and all that, but again, he's just a good guy to have on the club. Ayala with a 1 1 delivery, and that'll miss inside a two ball, one strike count. I think, uh, I guess, in baseball vernacular, not only scout the player as far as what he can do on the field, but you scout the, the player as a person. And Cody Ross is, as long as he stays healthy, is going to help this ball club in both capacities. A gamer. Ayala just misses outside. Luis Ayala, 6'2, 190 pounder. A lot of major league uh, experience with the American and National Leagues, as we said with the Yankees last year with that fine year. His major league record 31 wins, 41 losses. And that's going to be a leadoff walk to Cody Ross. Yeah, and as uh, so many pitchers have had to do, he comes uh, to Washington uh, with Montreal, pitches back to back years, 81 appearances in both of them, blows out his ligament, has to have Tommy John surgery. So it took him a while to come back. I mean, in the minor leagues in 2010, every pitch in the big leagues. And then last year started with Scranton, ends up with the Yankees. So Ayala looking for a spot. He'll go to the stretch here and power. Lavarnway with great power, the young catcher we talked about getting his first at bat. Well, if my recollection, when we go back to last year, he what hit two home runs? The night before the season ended, and then they they hit him fifth. And when the Orioles needed it out that last night, they would come back from a 3-2 deficit, win it. And after the rain delay, it seemed like he was a guy they were able to get out. You know, they moved him up in the lineup, didn't protect him very well, and the Orioles were able to take advantage. But he does have big time power. That's why he's got a shot at being the backup catcher for the Red Sox this year. Lavarnway with a runner at first base here in the top of the seventh inning. And a good pitch as Ayala came inside to him. Jams that one foul. Yeah, Luis Ayala, it's all about movement. I mean, he's going to cut it, he's going to turn it over. Not a hard throw, 88. Maybe he'll get a little over 90 miles per hour. Looking for a ground ball here. Of Ironway, he'll take the pitch inside. Major League experience for the Red Sox catcher, only 17 games. He's played uh, 
370 minor league ball games. The Iron Way will turn uh, is 24 years old, 25 in August. Three ball, one strike out, runner off first base, and there's that big cut. When he connects, a thing of beauty. When he does not, you get a few strikeouts. Although he's kept those pretty reasonable. Yeah. Well, the other thing when you look at him, he's never really had a year where he's gotten well, most he's ever gotten, that was all the way back his second year, four hundred at bats. The rest of the years two hundred and eight. So not a lot of the bats for a young player. Not the way I all wanted to start the inning. Two walks. Ross will get down to second base. The Barnway will get down to first. And Lars Anderson, the first baseman, will get a shot here. And we will get a pinch runner coming into second base for the Red Sox. Should be Pedro Siriaco. Siriaco running at second for Cody Ross. Nobody out. That's not for the chance for a big inning. Anderson has walked, scored, it into a double play. Pedroia had a two RBI double in the second inning. Sweeney an RBI single in the first, accounting for the three Red Sox runs. Since then, uh, Red Sox left a runner on in second. That's the only base runner they've stranded. Orioles have had a double play to eliminate one other base hit. Pitching is dominated, and now the Red Sox trying to get the offense going again. And Luis Ayala trying to get a double play ball. And remember the cutter right there, a little movement. Loves to use the cut fastball in on the left handed hitter's uh, fist. And the reason for that is most lefties like the ball down in the zone. You try to throw it right underneath their hands. And it's a great strikeout pitch. We saw Lester do it to the right hander Jay Miller for a strikeout at a crucial time earlier on. Ayala had that fabulous 209 earned run average in those games with the Yankees last year 56 innings, 51 hits. Struck out 39, walked 20. Gave up only 13 earned runs in those 56 innings. Stays away from him and gets the foul ball. And it holds the count. One ball, two strikes on Lars Anderson. The Anderson's always been one of their, usually their top 10 prospects. 14 home runs last year. Drove in almost 80 runs. Watched him hit today. Really uses the whole field. And they play him very shallow in left field. And pitching him to go to left field. Big gap is in left center as they figure he's either going to go pull the ball towards right yeah, or yeah, pitch I mean, away. Yeah, he's going to hit the left. There's your gap you were talking about. Wind blowing that way. That is now it's turned around a little bit blowing out a little bit to left. And of course you slice the ball it's going to blow away from the center fielder. He goes the other way. Miller will come up with it making the turn. Sariaco is going to come around to score, and that's a base hit and an RBI for Anderson, and the Red Sox take a four to one lead. Yeah, Luis Alec just can't hang around the middle of the plate. Certainly can't. Pretty obvious walk guys to get to this count, but it's just pretty much something right in the middle of the plate. Missed away a couple of times, 0 and 2. And there is Pedro Sariaco. Sounds like it's a name in Major League, the movie Major League. Good home run hitter. Pedro Sariaco. Oh. Sariaco will work. Yeah. So here's Middlebrook, first to bat for him. And he will take the pitch inside for a ball. He's made all the all rookie teams around and played in all the special games for young players, and now he's looking for an opportunity to make a mark with the Red Sox on the big league level. And boy, they have he comes with a lot of ink. He's got some power, extra base hitter. Swung on and missed. I like the way he plays defense. He's just 23 years old. Yeah, probably uh, 
maybe a little higher touted with his glove at this point. But what they do say, and this is what scouts are always thinking, every place he's gone, he's figured it out. Very young. Good pitch. Oh. Ayala gets him looking. Big strikeout. Yeah, yeah, a big strike zone, too. Mm -hmm. I think he thinks his ball is down and away. And now, might have been. Nicely framed. Well, that's a big out. Chance for the ground ball double play now to try and get out of this. Tejeda coming up. Double A ball last year. Playing in Portland, Maine. Should be his first at bat. He's in for Cabroya. Data with an 0 1 count, one down. Runners at first and second. And did he go? They check it first? Nope. Thought about it, but held up. Data looking for a big hit here. No major league experience uh, for him out of the Dominican Republic, only 22 years old. He's played pro ball since uh, 07. Minor league numbers 274 average, almost 2,000 at bats at the minor league level. Dropped down a little bit. Yep. Ayala gets him to go after it as it rode up and a 2 2 count. Yeah, he drops down, hangs a breaking ball, but the speed fools the young hitter. The Barnway. Anderson the runners third base and an Ellie Tallis on the turn nice pick gets away at first and a run will score. Lavarne will score ball gets away and Tejeda will go down to second base. So they got the out at second on Lars Anderson but unable to turn two and worse yet it bounces away and a run scores. Yeah, kind of slow developing and right here again they, they the bad throw. And again how quickly do you get down and disrupt the second baseman trying to make that throw. And the Red Sox do a good job of it. Jonathan E is the pinch runner. At second base. And Bobby Valentine getting one of the players he brought with him in the ball game. Still two down and a 5 1 lead now in another situation with the Orioles. In this case, unable to turn the double player, more importantly, keep the ball in front of the first baseman. Have a mistake that allows a run to score. Second error charge. Error will be on that throw. Well, it, it's five to one, and there are three runs that could have uh, gone the other way if you play a little bit better defensively. And again, when you're only putting one run on the board, it's certainly glaring. Two on delivery on the way, that will go to third. Antonelli up with this one, and we'll get it over to first base for the out. But a run in, an unearned run coming on a hit at an error, and it is now seventh inning stretch time in Sarasota. This.
Get suited up for spring training at the official online shop of the Orioles. You can browse the largest selection of authentic Orioles gear, including the new 2012 cartoon bird home and away authentic caps, clubhouse t-shirts, jersey sweatshirts, and more. Get set for spring at the official source, the Orioles.com shop. Folks up here at Ed Smith Stadium at the spring training home of the O's. As the Red Sox have the 5 1 lead, seventh inning stretch time. The Orioles out hitting, uh, Red Sox out hitting the Orioles 8 1 in this ballgame. And uh, we'll see at least a couple more pitches for each of these teams. Bernard coming on to play in center in left field for the Red Sox. Lynn is going to play in center. And the pitch will be taken for a strike. Wilson Betamid has come on. Lead it off here as the Orioles try and get back. I mean, one hit. And that came in the first inning as Adam Jones got the single that drove in a run. And that's it. No well, Betamid. Who has drawn a walk and hit into a double play? Try and kick it off here in the bottom of the seventh, and he's not going to do it on that one. Yeah, but Aaron Cook gets away with a little bit of the breakup. Okay. The backup breaking ball, you don't try to throw it, but sometimes it's very effective because you think it's you think it's going to maybe break, and it doesn't. Well, that was a backup slider, but it certainly fools Wilson. Second inning of work for Cook, and he will get the ground ball shift in the infield, and a great play made. There you go, Pedro came in to pinch run. What a play this is! The shift is on, but he's playing still on the other side of second base. And tell you what, talk about a highlight play. Aaron Cook, of course, he throws grounders. He wants him caught. Pedro out of nowhere to make the play. Zarco coming across was well behind second base in shallow center field when he made that play. And boy, that was a beauty. The Syriaco gets to the highlight reel. And a ground ball this time at the second base off Jay Miller's band. And there is the quickest inning we've had in a hurry. A one, two, three inning. We've completed seventh. Stop getting ready in the bullpen. Pedro Strope is going to come on and do the pitching. Ayala worked an inning, gave up an unearned run, a hit, a couple of walks in the inning that hurt him. Strope, of course, much watch. Another one of the names for the future for the Orioles. You see the numbers last season that he put up. Yeah, they were sparkling. And uh, he comes over, picked up off of waivers, and uh, kind of completed a trade for Mike Gonzalez, the lefty who went to the Rangers. But uh, he was. Special one run in 12 innings, eight hits, didn't walk a lot of guys. 
three, 12 strikeouts, one per inning. A slider he'd throw in any count, and a fastball in the mid 90s. The Orioles continue to make some changes here. Better be hitting that last inning out of there, and Baez has come on to play. Aldridge will come on to work in right field, and Larish is going to be the first baseman for the Orioles. And we go to the eighth inning. Ortiz looking for his first hit in the DH role. Struck out, flyed out, grounded out. So he's gone three for 12 in spring training so far, and two of the three hits Ortiz has put up have been home runs. They've got the big shift on against him. And the breaking ball will miss, and a 2 0 count. Pedro Strope. Big cut. Ortiz figured he was going to get one to hit, but good location on that one. That was what the Orioles have had today, pitching wise. That run coming against the Orioles starter, and then all the way into the seventh inning before Ayala would give up another good work, Phillips Tillman. Well, that's the one thing Stroke could do. Mm. Of course, last year that slider and fastball count, it seemed like he was able to throw it over at any time. And of course, when you throw 94 with good movement, you can throw it by people. Strobe's third appearance of the spring, he's worked an inning each against Tampa Bay and Atlanta. Tampa Bay gave up a run on a couple of hits. Atlanta, no runs, no hits. He's had four strikeouts and one walk in the two games this spring. Ortiz at 36 years of age. As you mentioned, Gary, coming off a monster year. 3 2, that's going to go to second base. Collison is there, makes the play over the first, and again, it's that shift, and Ortiz retiring. Yeah, Pedro throws the strike and lets his defense do the work. That's a long throw from him. Mm -hmm. Shallow right field. Yeah. Jason Repko is going to get his first at bat. Robert Andino, who made the start for the Orioles at second base in the ball game, joining us here in the eighth as he is out of there. Strope's pitch is away. Uh, hey, Robert, first of all, thanks for joining us. Appreciate it. No problem. How's the uh, how's the spring going for you? Uh, things you're working on right now? Oh yeah, you know, every day every day is a it's a battle out here. You go out there work out. You know. And there are little things you got to work on. But it's beautiful. I can't complain. Good weather. Good yeah, weather, yes. It is. Yeah, you're used to it coming from Miami. You know, it. Yeah, you've been working on your bunting or anything like that. I know that Dwayne Kirby had everybody out last year. Oh, yeah, that's uh, that's one of my main goals. Get better than that bunny. We all know how that turned out. But yeah, that's one of my main goals. Getting better than that bunny. And then you stole a base today. So we can we can I count on 20 on my scorecard for the year? That's the plan. That's the plan. <laughs> it's it. That's what we're going for. Do you really do you want to run more this year yourself? Do you like doing that? Oh yeah, I think it's fine. I like it. You know, it's just another, another part of my game that I gotta gotta work on and I need to you know get better at. So yeah, I, I'm out there every day with Kirby trying to get better. Yeah, I mean, is that what you do? Can you kind of explain to the people at home watching how, how do you get better as a base stealer? You gotta work on your jumps. The first my my first three steps gotta be clean. Uh, you know, not spinning clean. You know. It's a couple words you got to put it, but it just it's just getting clean jumps. You know, you get a clean jump, and, you know, just use speed after that. Now, do you ever talk to Brady Anderson? Of course, you know Brady. I think stole 50 once with the Orioles. Does he ever give you any tips? Nah, Brady just he, he could be giving me tips on hitting. <laughs> Brady, Brady Brady's a hitting guy for me. Well, he also hit 50 home runs, so maybe you should listen to him. Right? Well, yeah, I'm yeah. just trying to see some ground balls at the middle. I ain't trying to hit 50. <laughs> Ladaris at the plate, getting his first at bat. In the ball game with the runner at first base, Robert, what's your uh, sense of how spring training has gone so far, as far as the ball club is concerned? What's the field? Oh, it's great. You know, it's the early, it's first week. You know, just breaking, breaking it in. But I think, I think we look good. You know, it's just the first week. We got a long way to go, but I think so far so good. Now the Red Sox come to town. You beat them with a double up in Boston. 
and you got the game winning hit. Uh, it seemed like the middle of the night uh, that got him out of the playoffs. Did they talk to you? Did anybody say hello today? Or they, they, oh, you, yeah, you're yeah. still on the most wanted list. It's cool. I, I hope they don't hold no grudges. <laughs> it ain't my fault. So I'm just doing what I got to do. So, nah, yeah, a couple of them said what's up. And, and nah, that's the path. Was that one of the most exciting things that ever happened in your career, that game winning hit off of Pample Bomb? Well, yeah, that, you, you, you can put it up there. You can put it up there at top three. Yeah, I know. Well, yeah. I want to hear the other two. Come on, <laughs> give me the top three. Well, I'm yeah. with the double in Boston. Yeah, you can say that. Anytime you, anytime you can beat Boston at their place, I'll take it. Yeah. Machado has to make the play over the first base as Repco was running that time. But Aris is retired. Two down here oh, in the eighth man. inning. So as you go through the, uh, how many uh, at bats do you feel you need in spring training in order to be ready to go? I don't know. It just, just, just having, just, just taking quality at bats and having a plan where as you go up to the plate, I think you know that just it, it trans over to the game. It just, just having an approach, and you know, when you come into the box. And the approach is going back up the middle. Yeah, trying to hit the pitcher's feet. Nah, <laughs> just, nah, yeah, just think, yeah. you know, just trying to stay, you know, within my game, you know, just getting on base for the big boys. Robert, we appreciate it. A uh, great moment to end the season last year. I hope you have a lot of those this year. I appreciate it. Thanks for being with us. Robert Andino made the start at second base for the Orioles in the ball game today and has scored the only run. He picked up a, a walk in the first inning, stole second, and then came home on the only hit the Orioles have, Adam Jones, who delivered the single. Pedro Seriaco now with a runner at second base who's trying to get the third. Here's the throw, and the end with a stolen base. Repco steals it. Hester with the throw. Antonelli trying to lay the tag on. So a lot of people will be saying, why is Bobby Valentine sending a runner five to one? I'll tell you why, because you might throw it away. Now, the, the good news, he made it, and it's close. And they don't look too good if you get thrown out. We, we, some, didn't somebody try to steal home? Yes. With Ellsbury at the plate with two outs and got thrown out? Well, there you go. Got it. Yeah, good slider right there. So the strikeout recorded. Strub gets it. The strikeout and a walk in the inning, and a runner stranded at third. 5 1 Red Sox. Here in Sarasota, and that's uh, downtown near the harbor area in the middle of the city. Jazz Festival concluding last night. Great blue gas day yesterday at one of the beaches here. Lots of activity, and a lot of folks made their way to Sarasota here during this winter season, and it has been a beauty. And we see Doug Mathis coming out for Boston as Cook worked a couple of innings, gave up no hits, struck out one, walked two. Well, the um, there is his numbers last year, and uh, kind of an eventful year. Signed with Cleveland in uh, in January, released prior to the season. Then he signed with San Francisco, 13 wins. Uh, he was down at uh, their Triple A in Fresno, even though he had a low year array. Then Oakland claimed him, made four starts for them, and then finished the year in Korea. So mileage. Been around. 
And now trying to find a spot on the Red Sox staff. He pitched college ball at the University of Missouri back in uh, 05. Now Mathis will go to work in the bottom half of the eighth inning. These teams meeting for the second time this spring. The Red Sox won the first one by a score of 5 to 4. Red Sox and Orioles will play five times during the spring schedule, and then of course 18 during the regular season. Ryan Adams, the DH batting ninth, is grounded out and flied out. Orioles have left only four on base, two in scoring position in the ball game. Antonelli, be waiting to get his first at bat here in the inning. One strikeout. Ryan Adams, the chopper off the end of the bat, that'll go foul. <laughs> yeah, really good fastball hitters, and the numbers kind of show you that. 370 against left handers last year. The numbers go down, and Ryan versus righties. Down in the 240 range. Slider comes into play. And the slider is such a tough pitch to hit because it appears to be a fastball until it. Slides either away or both away and down. And a cut on a fastball, probably up high. Oh, well, Mathis starts it with a strikeout. Yeah, Mathis comes in, he gets ahead, and then he just goes out of the zone. You can see the target from the Barnway. Just up the ladder. Each pitcher has struck out a batter for the Red Sox in this ball game. Here's Matt Antonelli in the leadoff spot. And Antonelli will take it for his strike. Antonelli's had a couple of hits and seven at bats so far in the spring training. And Mathis's pitch is going to miss down low. Can really tell who the ball club's taking a look at by the number of at bats and appearances that happen, even though the players may not be talked about a lot. If they're getting a lot of at bats and appearances, and it means the manager wants a look see, and Antonelli's one of those. And he gets a base hit going the other way with it. The Orioles have their second hit of the game and the first one since the first inning. Well, Matt Antonelli, I had a chance to meet him for the first time today. Again, a former number one. Uh, Draft choice by the Padres, as is Robert Andino. He was the second round by the my, you know, the, the the Florida Marlins, now the Miami Marlins. So you get some guys with, again, good natural ability, and they just have to figure out how to hone them into baseball skills. Like this youngster that walks to the plate, Xavier Avery, and this is his first at bat. He goes to first. That's going to be knocked down, and then the play will be made. At first, no chance at second base. Antonelli goes down to second. Hard hit, ground ball, and Gomez able to knock it down. Hang on. Well, that's what you try to do. You try to get a ball. You can hit by the first baseman, but uh, Gomez is able to get into it, even though it's hit sharply. Ariel Gomez playing two games today. He's another player who was in the B game, played earlier, played first base there as well. Started, in fact. Here's Manny Machado. The fans take a special look every time he gets a chance. Uh, and that's going to go to right and be handled easily by Rutgers. Orioles retired, no runs, one hit, no errors, and one left on base after eight. The Red Sox five, and the Orioles one.
Orioles baseball on Masson is brought to you by Sarasota. So much to see and do in Sarasota on Florida's Gulf Coast. So go beyond the stadium to the number one beach in the USA. Visit numberonebeach.com. Big crowd on hand here at Ed Smith Stadium in Sarasota for the ball game today. We've had overcast guys which have actually helped the cause. Keeping that uh, big bright hot sun away for this crowd today. And it's been very pleasant watching the ball game. Yeah, he said uh, maybe late rain. Of course, uh, Oliver Drake doesn't want that. Those are the numbers last year. A uh, ball, as you can see, all the way to AAA out of the Naval Academy. So I had a chance to see him throw, but never in, in game situation. As he comes in to pitch the ninth inning. Drake has worked against Boston in the first game. He uh, worked an inning, a run on two hits. He also pitched against Tampa Bay an inning, gave up one run on one hit there. Overall, no walks and one strikeout in those two innings that he's pitched so far. And of course, he's got a, at least when he was a kid coming from Worcester, Mass., a little bit of an affinity for the Red Sox, you would think. Maybe not today, but not right now. Past years. Drake working to LeBarnway, the catcher, who drew a walk his first time up. LeBarnway will take it outside, gets ahead on the count, two balls and no strikes. LeBarnway has picked up a one hit, only five at bats, a couple RBIs so far this spring for Boston. He's shopping doing the catching. He's going to be looking fastball here, and there's your second. Sure. That's going to go by Antonelli in fair territory down the line. Baez over to get it, and it will be a single for LeBarnway. Lead off man on here in the ninth inning. This copyrighted telecast presented by authority of the Orioles may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Baltimore Orioles. Gary Thorne, Jim Palmer and our great crew with you here in Sarasota. Next Sunday we'll be back with the Yankee game night game. That will be at 7 o'clock here at Ed Smith Stadium next Sunday night. Mario Gomez and he fouls that one off. Gomez getting his first at bat. With the leadoff man on for Boston. Gomez had a lot of opportunities in the A games. He's played, uh, in fact, entirely in B games prior to this one. 0 1 delivery to it. Pops it up. Second base, Collison. One down. Yeah, big difference when you can get ahead of the count. Varn Way looking fastball after he got the hitter the count in his uh, favor, able to hit it a little bit more sharply. That'll bring Middlebrook to the plate. Came on to play third base. This will be his. Second at bat, he got called on on strikes. His first time up, and a cut. And he's got a base hit into left field. So Middlebrook not waiting. He got one up in the strike zone that he liked the looks of, and he's on with a single. Yeah, most hitters will look fastball and make a make adjustments. You know, if you hang a breaking ball, you can still hit it. He just gets one up. Oliver Drake better down in the zone because the ball is going to sink. Lynn's going to get his first at bat. He has not had an appearance at the plate in the ball game, and he will file that one back. Jonathan He. And uh, even in the count up on the fly ball, one ball, one strike. Oliver Drake with runners at first and second, only one away, looking for the ground ball. And the pitch will come inside. And it takes me back to Abbott and Costello. He's at the plate. Yeah, but who's up? <laughs> 2 1 delivery. 
And that's fouled off, even in the count up two balls and two strikes on Jonathan He. A lot of these players from um, overseas showing up in the major leagues have been seen in the Major League Baseball Classic, which is going to be renewed again next year. And that pitch. Just misses. Pretty good off speed delivery right there. And the count goes to three balls and two strikes. He out of the University of Hawaii, which is where he is from. He's in Honolulu. That's his home. Fifth professional season, 241 minor league average. And that is a fair ball. That's going to get an RBI at least one. The Barnway will score. Baez plays it in. It's a double starting at third base is Middlebrook. So he delivers. And it's a 6 1 Red Sox lead. Yeah, take a look right here. Single hitters in the minor league. He gets a ball uh, inside middle, playing off the line. And of course, you can't get that because you don't anticipate somebody pulling your heater. So a routine ground ball, just well placed down into the corner. And they'll play the infield in, even though you're trailing by five. And this will be Lynn's first at bat. The Orioles will use it as an opportunity to practice trying to cut off the run. Only one away. Runners on at second and third. 11 hits now for Boston on the board. And Lynn, an opportunity for a couple of RBIs if he can pick up a base hit right here. Red Sox, as we said, have, I mean, they led the world offensively last year during the regular season. And this spring, they've kind of picked up right where they left off. One ball, one strike delivery. Infield still in. Lynn pops that one up shallow right. Runner will tag. Middlebrook at third. He's not going to go. Throw comes in to cut off man. And there are two down. Alex Hassan. Double A. Last year for the Red Sox. Some pretty impressive numbers. Yeah. Yeah, stole some bases at 13 home runs, nine points shy of 300. And again, only in his third year in professional baseball. Only 24 years old. A college guy, Boston College. Yep. The sun pops that one up second base. Collison is there. He's got. It. Well, the Red Sox will add a run here. They do it on three hits, leave a couple on. We go to the bottom of the ninth inning with the Orioles down six to one. So they also get one more chance at it as we go to the bottom of the ninth inning Red Sox pitchers starting with John Lester held the Orioles to just that run on two hits. Justin Irvano will come on to do the pitching last season with the Indians for nine. Yeah he's been in the big leagues on a number of occasions San Diego 2004 Cincinnati 2006 back to San Diego seven eight and then the Indians the last couple of years. But not a lot of appearances but. Again, you're still around. You're still under 30. Get an opportunity to uh, finish this out. Tollison will be ready to come to the plate for the Orioles. The 
Orioles bats have really been held down in this game with just two singles out of Jones first inning that brought in a run and then all the way to the eighth inning before they got another one a single by Antonelli. Tollinson threw a walk his first time up. Red Sox trying to take the second of five against the Orioles this spring. A lot of those pitches inside for the ball. Tollison and spring training invitee, 28 year old. Yeah, does a lot of things well. Does an over swing, line drive hitter. Dad played in the big leagues. Not a lot of big league experience for him, only 25 games. That came with Oakland in 2010. 1 1 delivery. And Tollison down to third, kicks it off for the base hit. And it'll be chased into the corner. Tollison will make the turn. He'll head to second base, and he's on with a double, and the Orioles have their first extra base hit of the day. Well, everybody yelling, give him a finish, and that's what the Orioles are going to try to do. Just fastball over the bag. Kind of up a little bit. Again, playing off the line, percentage baseball. Through the seven run lead and make it a five run lead. Seems like a seven. But it's only five. That's how pitching's been so tough. Where is lucky to get that run in the first inning, helped out by the Andino stolen base. Uh, Hester's going to get his first at bat, and the Orioles catcher will take it inside for a ball. Hester has had four at bats, 0 for 4 in the spring training games. Another invitee to spring training. Pitch is taken for a strike. Hester, 28 years old, major league experience with the Diamondbacks for some 53 games in 09 and 10. Last year, after the Orioles acquired him, he played at Norfolk, coming over in the uh, Mark Reynolds deal. Breaking ball that is in there for a strike. Nice soft off-speed delivery. Yeah, that'll get your attention. It's the first one he's thrown, and then he drops it over for a strike. And Hester behind on the count one and two. Tollison off second base. Breaking ball in the dirt. Barnway with a nice stop. Well, those are the little things you're talking about. We're talking about a young hitter that comes out of double A and triple A. He's a catcher. Can he block balls in the dirt? Well, there's your example. Curveball, tough to, to block. You don't know which way it's going to spin. He's able to smother it. Two balls, two strikes. And foul back. I just think about it. And Every time you get a new manager, Bobby Valentine, for the first time managing the Red Sox, I think it puts everybody in the place. You know, you get the 7 and the 20 September, I and mean, he comes in. Everybody says, well, a big article today in the club, he's a micromanager, but maybe they need some micromanagers. Well, obviously, after the way it settled yeah, up, yeah, ended exactly. last year, there were things that need to be corrected. Here's the 2 2 again to Hester, and again, he's going to foul that pitch off. And an attention to detail, you. I mean, a lot of the great clubs I played on, Earl Weaver. Would you call Earl a micromanager because he wanted to know numbers and he wanted you to hit the cutoff man? Basic. Like, yeah, like Bobby said, I, I'm not going to tell him how to hit three line home runs. I don't need to know. They, they already know how to do that. But can they hit the cutoff man? Can they, uh, you know, situationally hit a little bit better? Esther got a hold of that one to center field. That is deep, and that will be hauled in. Runner tagging Tollison. And Hester's retired. Yeah, a little hanging curveball drill. I think it may get over. It'll be extra base hits. Lynn with a nice play out there to haul that in. Well, he was their uh, minor league defensive player of the year in 2008 2010. You see why? He went to it easily. He was playing a, a little shallow on that. Corey Aldridge. And the pitch is away for a ball. Runner at third base, one down here in the bottom half of the ninth inning. First at bat he's had in the game. 
I get a little nervous when I see somebody that looks like Al Oliver. <laughs> when he hits a line drive somewhere, then I'll really know really he's like Al Oliver. Well, Oliver, of course, I think close to 2,800 hits in his career. With the Pirates and the Rangers. And Aldridge will take that one in the air to right. Rep go. He's under it. He's got it. Runner will tag. Red Sox will play oh. it to the plate. Good throw. Yeah, a really good throw. throw. And he got right. him. Tollison did not touch the plate. And he is out of there. It'll end up being a double play in the Aldridge fly ball. Nine to two. Rep go with a really nice throw. Well, again, you know, it, it's six to one. Long throw, you just never know. See right there, they said he slid right by it. You can see the home plate umpire, Chad Fairfield. I don't know if he tagged it or not. Umpire's looking right at it. Apparently not. Game over. Red Sox pitchers dominating this one. 6 11 and 0 for the Red Sox. 1 3 and 2 for the Orioles. Red Sox have won the first two spring training meetings. Join us next Sunday for more O's action. Beautiful Sarasota, the site. The O's take on the Yankees. Our coverage, 7 o'clock on Masson HD. For Jim Palmer and all of our great crew, I'm Gary Thorne. Thanks for joining us from Ed Smith Stadium here in Sarasota. It's the Red Sox 6 and the Orioles 1. Our final, this has been a massive presentation. Sarasota, how do I do?